And we are live. Hey everyone, this is Roberto Blake helping you create something awesome today. Welcome to another live stream. We're doing a Q&A today and we're going to be talking about brand deals. We are going to be talking about how much to charge, how to find brand deals, figuring out your pricing and packaging, what you really need to know if you are a small influencer, if you are a nano influencer with 1,000 to 10,000 followers in a platform, or if you are a micro influencer with 10,000 to 50,000 in a platform, you'll definitely want to watch this. And even if you are a mid tier creator or you are a macro creator with anywhere from 50 to 500,000 followers in any platform, this is still going to be helpful to you if you have a little bit of experience or none at all when it comes to brand deals. So I've actually brought in two special guests for this live stream. So we're definitely gonna be talking about this, but I need you to do a favor if you're watching this or you're watching the replay. If you're watching this live or you're watching the replay, go ahead and smash the like button because apparently the YouTube algorithm loves that or so I'm told by bigger creators. And of course, remember to share any of this information with other content creators, help out the community, get this some traction, especially since this is a topic that not a lot of people cover. So. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm also excited, by the way, to tell you that today's live stream is sponsored by our good friends at StreamYard, the simplest platform for live streaming, the best live stream tool out there. Links are in the description down below. This is also sponsored by our good friends over at TubeBuddy, the best and number one productivity tool or YouTube content creators. So really excited to have them sponsoring us on a video about sponsorships and brand deals. So uh, make sure you're checking that out. Of course, all of our sponsors are linked down below. Welcome to the program today, my good friends, Jeff and Viper. So we have Jeff from El Jefe Reviews, also part of the vidIQ team and helping content creators with coaching, advice, and making a great tool. I can talk about that even though we're sponsored by TubeBuddy, no problem. And also my boy, Viper, the man about tech, who also hosts Clubhouse Rooms, sponsored by uh, our friends over at vidIQ as well over on Clubhouse. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. How's it going this weekend? Going good. Are we back in the building? Been a while. Yeah, man, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, it's not a problem. One of the things that I, I really like here is that we'll be able to have multiple perspectives. Um, you know, we won't just be going off of my data, my stats, my background, my opinions. We'll be able to talk this out for the community. And just so everyone knows, what we have here is Jeff, how many uh, subscribers over on YouTube are you at right now? Uh, 53, 53 and change. Okay, so this is perfect. Yeah. So this is perfect. We've got Viper with about 5,000 subscribers got Jeff with about 50,000 subscribers and we've got me with 500,000 subscribers. This is perfect. That is so this is perfect. So we have basically the full gamut of representation here in terms of, you know, um, a, a nano influencer, um, a mid micro to mid tier influencer, because you're right on the cusp of that, Jeff. And then with me being right on the cusp between being mid tier and macro. So like right there. So it's like, this is perfect. We have like the, the gamut of representation here in terms of what is realistic. <laughs> right. Definitely. So before we get to a lot of the questions in the chat and before we get to anybody's super chats or anything like that, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this. Let's go ahead and, and talk about brand deals. What Jeff, you, you actually have a really good track record with coaching and helping creators through vidIQ Viper. You hosted a great clubhouse room the other day where you actually brought brands on stage. You had Nomad, Verizon, you had Space Station as an agency. You know, a friend that's, uh, a, a, Space Station was started by my friend, Sean Duras, you know, a uh, huge content creator, the first Snapchat influencer, actually. So great entrepreneur. And we also had on stage uh, uh, a Andrew from Deity. There were so many great brands. So you've been talking with brands and about how they work with small uh, creators, Viper. Jeff, you've actually been coaching content creators. Gentlemen, what is everybody getting wrong when it comes to how to approach brands? And then let's talk about pricing. What is everyone doing wrong when it comes to approaching brands in the first place? Everyone here wants to know, how do I get a brand deal? How to get a brand deal? How do I reach out to brands? How do I get brands to notice me? Notice me, brands, notice me. What are they doing wrong? So 
I'm glad we're having this discussion because me and Jeff, obviously me and Roberto, we, we talked about this publicly before. Me and Jeff have talked about this more privately than publicly. So I'm glad we can actually talk about this publicly a little bit with me and Jeff. I think the first thing that most creators are getting wrong about brand deals is that they're approaching brand deal from the perspective of, oh, we're talking about brand. We're talking about Under Armour, Nike, Samsung, Apple, TubeBuddy, StreamYard, whatever. They're thinking about it as like a global entity, faith, nameless, faceless brand, blah, blah, blah. That is your first mistake. When you think about brands, you have to realize that the brands are run by actual human beings that have actual thoughts, actual feelings, actual emotions. They go through the same stuff that me, Jeff Roberto, and all of us in the chat here, they are going through the same things that we are going through day to day with life. They have families, they have, they have obligations, responsibilities. So I say all that to say that when you are reaching out to these brands, just remember that they are actual human beings and you should approach them accordingly like actual human beings because that will literally get you a long way if you just think about it as such and act like you're approaching a fellow human being instead of approaching just a brand. I'll let Jeff elaborate though. No, for sure. Even if it's you know something that, that you can do, um, if you've already opened up a rapport with them, uh, just checking in. You know, this is one of the things that uh, I was taught by uh, a good friend of mine, goes by the name of Board at Work, uh, Anabong Ete, also known as Thunder E. And he, one of the things that he does is he reaches out to his contacts weekly just to check in, just, hey, man, how's it going? How are the kids doing? You know, just kind of touch base with them um, on a human level, not asking for anything, not, you know, trying to work a deal, none of that stuff. Just speaking to them on a human to human level. How are you doing, man? How's things going? You just do quick check-ins, whether it's text message, phone calls, whatever it might be. But, you know, and I'm not saying everybody has to go out and do this with every single content they, uh, contact they make, but speaking to them on a human to human level, instead of thinking of them as some sort of a doorway into a brand, you know, remembering that they're human at the end of the day is just going to help you and help them in the end. So basically what both of you are saying is that we have to build actual relationships with the brand and not just use them for what we want to get out of it and not just reduce it down to a transactional relationship, yeah. you know? So it's not like get what I want and then ghost them. Right. Like, okay. So like, just like in real relationships, that's probably not a good thing to do. It's probably a douchey move to get what you want from somebody and then just never call them until you want it again. So, uh, yeah, probably just good to uh, keep that as a best practice in being human all around. Am I right, gentlemen? Am I right? Yeah. So, yeah. So don't when it comes to brands, don't just post and ghost. Don't just post your content for them and do the work and then ghost them until it's time to Mm, bank accounts getting a little bit low. I better hit them up again and everything like that. How you doing? Let's do another one off. Let's do another one time. Let's go. It's like, no, do not sit there and do not uh, do that. You know, you can have a professional relationship. No one's saying you have to sit there and you don't have to go uh, to people's barbecue or anything, but you should just kind of be thoughtful. And let me least. tell you how, how deep this goes. I'm pretty sure I know I do. I'm pretty sure Roberto does and El Jefe does as well. I'm pretty sure we all have people with individual phone numbers that, that work for these brand. We have their actual phone numbers. That's how deep it goes. So when I talk about building relationships and talking to them on a one-to-one -one human level, I can literally pick up my iPhone and text my contact and nomad and ask my doing whatever. I can do that because we have that relationship. And I'm pretty sure all of us have that connect as well. Yeah, Indeed. Keeping it, simple, keeping it simple, keeping it straightforward. And not only that, you know, we have to think long term. And this is the thing that a lot of people tend to forget because they're thinking in the here and now. And I'm, the reason I'm trying to build a relationship and try to deliver consistency is because I want to develop a long term relationship where instead of maybe having a one off deal with them, where every time that they have a product launch, whether it's in the spring and then the fall, that they can remember, you know what, we have a new thing coming out. Let's make sure we get Jeff on that list. And that becomes that consistent thing where in the fall, I'm part of the launch in the, you know, in the, in the springtime, I'm part of the launch and it becomes a consistent thing that I can count on. So this is where you start thinking, you start playing the long game instead of thinking short term and how much I can squeeze them for in this one round. Well, how about start thinking in a longer sense of where you can develop a long-term relationship and start having revenue coming in for a much longer period of time that can stretch into years. No doubt, man. Definitely. I agree. Something that I look at uh, with regard to this is you said a great word there, Jeff. You said the word consistency. You know, that's like my favorite, right? It's uh -huh. like it's consistency. So if we're talking about and I think both of you have familiar with this, we actually had this conversation in Clubhouse the other day. So what are brands looking for for creators? Are they just looking for 
your views, your follower counts, your subscribers, your Vandy metrics. Uh, here's the list of notes I actually have from your clubhouse room, Viper. <laughs> I, like, for real, I went like, here's the thing you see, and this is the game that people don't understand. Viper's a creator with 5,000 subscribers. He was able to create a clubhouse room, bring brands to the table to where Roberto Blake with 500,000 subscribers takes three pages of notes. They're actually valuable for my own content. Like y'all, the, the, a lot of the game and a lot of the, and sure there's things like favoritism in the industry, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? I don't care. I'm not, you know why I don't care? Cause I'm not soft. So I respect the game. Real hustle is where a 500,000 subscribed YouTube channel goes into the clubhouse room of a 5,000 subscribe YouTube channel and can actually still get value because of the relationships that creator is able to build. Y'all are worried about not being big enough and everything like that. It's not about being big enough. I don't want to make anyone secure. It's really about being good enough. It really is. You don't have to be big enough. You have to be good enough. And this is respect to Viper. Viper is good enough to like, I don't have, I don't have some of your contacts in the industry. I don't have a contact at Verizon. I don't have a contact at T-Mobile. Viper does, you know, I, my friend may have been the founder of space station. I didn't have the same connects at space station that Viper does. It's a matter of building the relationship. You know, it's not always about being bigger. Doesn't always mean better. Like, so for real. So here's the notes on, well, what are brands looking for? What are brands looking for? Let me talk about it real quick. Let me read off some of these notes here that I have. Let's see. What are brands looking for? Actually, let me just switch camera angles here. It's like, okay, so what are brands looking for? So brands are looking for how many videos do you actually have? What does your body of work look like? So that's an important one. Clear effort on your part. They want to see that the videos demonstrate clear effort, understanding. You know, it doesn't have to be the highest production values, but they do pay attention to production values. They pay attention to that. It's here in my notes. Uh, being consistent and the frequency of your uploads. They wanna see that you're actually in this and that they wanna see a commitment. Who wants to be with someone who's not able to make a commitment? Who wants to work with somebody or build a relationship with somebody who isn't committed to anything and isn't dedicated and doesn't have like that staying power? Like nobody wants that. So it's not about your view count and it's not about your follower count. What it really comes down to is also would this be somebody who can represent the brand well? So that means when you're out there and you're venting every minute on social media, you might want to chill on that. I'm not telling you to suppress yourself. I'm saying that you want a job essentially or a gig as a representative of a brand. You want to be a public facing figure representing a, a, a brand. You want to be a brand ambassador. Well, guess what? Start acting like it. Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. You want to attract brands? Be consistent, show up, keep your brand clean and advertiser friendly, and also make sure that you're promoting the and aligned with the values of the brand. You want to work with somebody? Probably the best way to build a relationship is to show somebody that you have the same values, that you're someone that's hardworking, consistent, and that you are willing to always put in the work and make a sincere effort because people respect work ethic, they respect commitment, they respect people who themselves are polite, respectful, professional in what they do, passionate about what they do. And that goes a long way in every type of relationship you could want to build, business or otherwise. Gentlemen, where's the lie? Man, I'm still, hey, I'm still looking. That, that's, that summed it up really, really well, man. I mean, it really, really did. And consistency is such a big thing. And it goes, it, it lends so much strength to not only your brand, your ability to create, the ability to grow a channel. I mean, consistency is more than just uploading one video per week. It's consistent in the way that you come across. It's consistent in your character, consistent in the way that you treat your entire social media base. So it's it goes into so much more that when people say, when they say something like, you know, to grow on YouTube, you got to be consistent. It's way deeper than just making sure you're posting one video per week. Yes. And to Jeff's point, uh, lately, I've been talking about how creators need to uh, build and maintain positive relationships with their fellow creators because having that bond with your fellow creator can actually open you up to opportunities that you might not be aware even exist. And it's funny that this actually came up in my brand room because the brand also communicate with each other about their experience with uh, different creators. So if a creator was, uh, did a brand dirty or whatever, then the brand communicate that to each other and then they know that maybe we should stay away from that creator. 
And on the flip side, creators, I need y'all to listen to me very closely. This actually works in reverse as well. If we as creators have a bad relationship with a brand, we talk to each other to let each other know that maybe you should not work with that brand. Now, there is a brand out there that I'm not going to name on this particular live stream, but they did my dude Del Jefe dirty. He let the people know what happened with that particular brand. And now I am pretty sure that that brand will get no more uh, uh, work from the tech space. It ain't happening. Nobody's touching that brand because of what they did to El Jefe. So it ain't about just what the what we're doing for the brands. It's about what the brands are doing with you all as well. Everybody has to be above board. It's not that's, that's, the, that's the other thing that we don't really talk about much is that you have to make sure that when you're working with a brand, that the brand aligns with you and your values and, and things that you are trying to relate to your audience. The brand has to be good people too. It's not just on the creators to be good people. The brand has to be good people too, because if they're not, it's not gonna work. Real talk. I mean, people should actually think about that more about, they shouldn't be so desperate to work with a brand that they compromise things and that they uh, don't respect the audience, you know, because I, and they don't respect themselves even, or that later they have to backpedal and say, oh yeah, I don't work with that brand anymore. I separated from them or this or that. You don't want to put yourself in that position uh, just because you want the money or frankly, it's not even about money for some creators. Some creators, they're looking for they're looking for love in all the wrong places. Creators are looking for love in all the wrong places. I be, I, be, I know I'm being facetious here, but think about it. What people like, I just want people to watch my videos. I just want the, oh, you ask them why they want a brand deal. They're like, because if I do a brand deal, people will feel like I'm legit and I'll be motivated to keep going and everything like that. You'll be motivated to keep going? People feel like you're legit? You're being way too in your feelings about this and everything like that. This is a career, my homie. This is a career, okay? Yeah. This isn't about your feelings being validated. You're a human being. You have feelings. I'm here for you. I understand. But let's talk, real talk. You're looking for validation and you're looking for um, you know, appeasement and you're looking for someone to indulge your feelings and you're mixing that with your career. It's a horrible idea. It's a horrible idea. You don't need other people's views and opinions and attention to validate you. You certainly don't need a brand to validate you, if you feel that you need that, you need to double down and you need to figure out what you're doing because the reality is, if that is how insecure you are about what you're doing, you need to take a step back. And I say that with all due respect to people because I know it hurts people's feelings to hear something like that, but you think about why it hurts your feelings. It hurts your feelings because again, you do not believe yet in what you're doing. You do not believe yet in what you're doing. Because the thing is, if you love something and you're doing it, you need to be able to do it in defiance of other people. Mm, amen. You have to do it in defiance of other people. You're a nerd. You're a this, you're a that, and everything like that. You need to be able to do the things you love in defiance of other people. You need to be able to do it without your parents understanding or respecting it. You need to be able to do it and disappoint people. You need to be able to be able to do this for yourself or you're not going to be able to do it long term at all. If you keep needing other people, and other things, people do all kinds of stuff to validate themselves. They buy expensive cars they don't need. They buy expensive clothes they don't need. Why? Because then people respect them because people then think that they're worthwhile. See how that works? So instead of trying to flex cars, watches, clothes, all these things, people are trying to do it with their follower accounts and with the brands that they work with and so on and so forth to make them feel more comfortable about what they're doing because they're being insecure about it. Work on that first instead of inflicting that into your content and into your audience. What do you gentlemen think about that? I know that one's a little touchy. I know, I, I know, I went there. I'll, I'll let Jeff go first. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I totally agree. You have to be able to, to step back from it and, and really, are you doing this for the right reasons? That's one of the things where you have to make sure, you know, even if you're just starting out or if you're planning on starting out, having the goal set in mind, what do you want the end game to look like? Because you have to have something that you want to achieve, right? So, you know, once you start kind of seeing which way do you want to go, do you want to turn this into a business? Do you want to turn this into just a career? Do you want to just have fun doing this? Whatever that might be. And then start working towards those goals and making sure that you can separate your own feelings from it in a sense, because there's always going to be, there's going to be a lot of tests as a creator. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to test your emotions, your, your consistency, your ability to want to do this. There's burnout that you have to deal with. So you have to be able to start kind of separating those two things and really just, you know, 
making sure that you are doing this for the right reasons, make sure you are committed to doing this. You know, that way, anything that comes your way, you're still going to be able to keep going. Whether you need to take a break here or there is completely fine. You know, I, I do that myself, but I still continue keeping this going. We're in, you know, four years and a month now that I've been doing this. So it's, you know, you, there's always going to be obstacles and roadblocks, but you have to make sure that you can, you know what your end goal is. You can see what the dream is and what it's going to take for you to get there. And I think that's really what's going to help you keep going. Um, but yeah, so little digression there, but. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I mean, I digressed. Uh, uh, we have a 199 super chat from How To with Julie Sue. Thank you for the $1.99 super chat sticker there. We have a quick question from that nerd, Chris. What about when you struggle to be consistent? If you're struggling to be consistent, I would address that problem and I would fix that in your brand before you decide that you're going to be part of somebody else's brand. All right, we said brands will care about consistency. If you're not consistent, if you're not capable of sustaining making content for your own brand, then maybe it's not the right time. Hate to say it. Maybe it's not the right time to be doing brand deals then. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Like, and that's okay. Yeah. I said, it sounds like gatekeeping. It may not sound fun, but here's the re here's real talk. There are qualifiers. If you want to be part of any business or any industry, think about it. You'd be asking, Hey coach, I know I didn't show up to practice the last three practice and I didn't do the workouts, but I really want to play in the game Saturday. <laughs> The answer is no. If I'm your coach, the answer is no. If I'm your coach, the answer is hell no. Yep. So we yeah. literally have brands come on my stage and talk about how important consistency is. So when Roberto keeps reiterating consistency, he's not just doing it out of his behind. Brands literally highlighted this in my room on Thursday night. They want to see creators being consistent. Um, whatever that looks like to you, but just make sure you're being consistent. There's no like one set way to be consistent. But whatever you choose to do, be consistent in what you do, because, again, it shows that initiative. It shows that you are serious about uh, being a content creator and you're serious about uh, the relationship that you could potentially forge with that brand if you're being consistent with your content. People want uh, consistency in all their relationships and partnerships. And the thing is, maybe not everyone's capable of consistency or a certain level of consistency. But guess what? That means that someone has the right to say no. I hate to say it to that because I know that that sounds exclusionary and it doesn't work for everybody. So everyone's like, well, I can't do that. Well, I can't do that. It's like, okay, but how is that then the other person's issue or the other person's problem? They have the right to tell you no. You don't have to work with everybody. You don't have to date everybody. You don't have to be friends with everybody. People get to have preferences and they get to say no. You can feel how you feel about that. But the thing is, if you if they said, here are my standards, here's what it takes to have a relationship with me. Here's what the job requirements are. Here is what you have to deliver on. Here are my deal breakers. Here are my lines in the sand. And if you're not willing to meet them on those things, you cannot be mad at them that the answer is no. You have to go ahead and say, well, I'm going to work with people who maybe don't have the bar set at that place for me. I don't want to say hi, but it's like, if that's the bar for working with those people and that's just not what I'm able to do or what I'm comfortable with, I should go ahead and work with people that I'm comfortable with or that will entertain what I'm trying to do or where I'm coming from on this. And I think that that's appropriate. You're not, you don't have to have a relationship with everybody. Right. Hey, Roberto, can I like divert for a second here? Can we do this one uh, super chat and then we can uh, definitely do that Viper? Absolutely. All right. So create with Dre says, let's get some hype in the chat for the amazing panel today, bringing us in and the ins and outs of something. So many other creators don't share their thoughts on kudos and much love and respect. Thank you. Create with Dre for the $20 super chat. Super chats are always appreciated mm -hmm. as is the love from our wonderful sponsors, uh, both with TubeBuddy and StreamYard. Also remember that uh, you can get the YouTube starter kit, which is brought to you by Roberto Blake and the Awesome Creator Academy, which is linked in the description down below. So thank you to our sponsors. And also thank you to my wonderful two guests here on the panel, Viper, the man about tech, Jeff from El Jefe Reviews. Both of them are part of the vidIQ uh, crew. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's participating in today's discussion. But Viper, you wanted to pivot for a second. Yeah, I want to divert Jeff for a moment. So. Uh, when new creators are on the scene, obviously they want to they want to work with brands or they have an aspiration to work with brands, or at the very least, they want to get in with the the brand contact and things like that. So they might reach out to an established creator to ask for contact. So I need to talk about this for a minute and talk about how this works or doesn't work, whatever you want to do. Uh, pay close attention to what I'm about to tell you all. 
I myself, I have no problem sharing my contact with my fellow creators if we have that relationship. Now, what I mean by if we have that relationship, if I rock with you, you rock with me and things like that, and we 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 have a discord. Um, the thing that kind of gets on my nerves is when like I have never seen a creator in my life, but they will literally come into my Twitter DM and be like, yo, Viper. Let me get that contact to Verizon or Viper. Let me get that contact to such and such. And I'm just like, who in the blue monkey the hell are you? I don't know you. Where, where are you coming from? Who sent you? So the other thing that you all need to realize, especially for the newer creators that don't understand how this works, is that when a creator shares their contact with you, their brand contact with you, they are literally putting their AWS on the line for you. Let me repeat that for the people in the back. If I give you my contact, I am putting my AWS on the line for you. Because All your street cred. Yes, and the street cred. Because if you go and mess that up, that goes back on me. Because I'm the one who referred you to the contact. So it, I don't want you all to get mad when some creators refuse to give you their contact. I'm letting you know why. Now, not everybody is as nice as me and Jeff and Roberto. Um, and that's their prerogative and that's their right. But that I'm letting you all know why they're not so nice about it. Because again, when we do that, when we share your name with our brand contact we are literally putting our butts on the line for you so that's why some of us are leery but you all you don't you don't just think to get out of bed and get our contacts we put in years of work to get those contacts getting these contacts is not easy it takes a lot of work you have to build yourself to, up to a level whatever even take you seriously enough to even contact and, and relate with you so i just want to make that quick little pivot i'm pretty sure Hefe can back me up on it but that's what it is that, that's, that's the reality of it yeah, you're vouching what? for somebody else, so you have to be careful with that. I want to know uh, in response to good knit uh, kisses uh, in the chat when you say keyword established. I want to know what uh, people mean because, by the way, even the advice we're giving here, it doesn't matter whether you're established or not for the advice we're giving here. This is like just about professionalism. And the thing is, I think too many of you are really in your feelings about whatever your size is, and I think there is some some I'm not. Just saying that to people to be mean or anything. I, and I'm not saying that to everybody in the chat. I want you, if the shoe fits, wear it. If it doesn't, don't. But it's one of those things where we have to address this. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what you can do when you have 1,000 subscribers or less. I have a very, very unpopular, controversial opinion. I think if you have less than 1,000 subscribers, I like it's possible. And again, a, respect to everybody. A lot of my fellow creators love hyping up the brand deals people are getting under a thousand subscribers less than a thousand subscribers and everything like that i don't think you have any business doing brand deals at a thousand subscribers i think at a thousand subscribers or a thousand followers or less you should be building relationship with your audience as your number one and if you want to hit up brands for free product and review units to make your content better then do that but i think the first thing a creator should be doing is spending all of their energy figuring out how to make good content and how to build an audience Think about it. If you're trying to get brand deals, you're trying to apply to a job with no reputation, no body of work to show for yourself. You're trying to ask for an opportunity when you have no results. You shouldn't be offended that the answer to most of that is no. Can you imagine graduating from high school and then immediately trying to walk into a high ticket sales job and ask for an $80,000 a year salary? <laughs> right. So why? Why oh why? Let's 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 play um, you know Roberto's advocate here. Let's play Roberto's advocate. Why would I take one thousand dollars out of Create Awesome Media's bank account and give it to a creator and pay a creator's rent that has no experience? I'm the first person they have hit up to ask for like a brand deal like for money. They have no experience. They've never done a paid brand deal. They haven't even done free product review content yet, any of that. They've done less than 30 videos. They um, don't have a large audience or of even 1,000 people yet. How, and I, and I ask them, if I just ask them honestly, how am I going to get my $1,000 back? And how are you going to turn the $1,000 I invested into $3,000 or $5,000 because that's what I need to happen here because I'm a small business owner. I'm a small business owner. If I pay you $1,000, I'm not buying $1,000 worth of YouTube ads. If I pay you $1,000, I'm not hiring a freelancer to help make more product for me. If I pay you $1,000, I'm not um, buying like into uh, ads that I could run 
against somebody else's YouTube channel or podcast that probably has a bigger audience, I could just run ads. Why am I going to give you a thousand dollars and how am I going to get that thousand dollars back? And how am I going to turn that thousand dollar investment into a three thousand dollar profit? How is that going to happen? Why am I doing that? And the answer is really going to be, I need you to take a chance on me. It's going to be about them. It's going to be them, 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 the me, 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 I, 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 I. And then I, if I have asked, how is my brand something that your audience is going to love? And where's the proof of that? They don't have an answer. So again, advocating for myself here, how is somebody going to act entitled to $1,000 of my money because they want to be validated and they want an opportunity and they want to pay their rent without telling me in any way, shape, or form how I'm going to get my money back? Like, And how is somebody going to do that? And then like, if I did that, I'd feel guilty. If I did that, I'd feel horrible that I took $1,000 from a small business owner and then I just made whatever I wanted to make and I'm happy and I got my money and then they didn't make their money back, I'd feel horrible. Yep. ROI, man. Yep. So I'm not saying you can't ask for brand deals. I'm saying you need to have a really clear understanding of, okay, so what are you gonna do? You're, you, what, what the brand can do for you is super, super obvious. Okay, but why would they do that? What are they gonna get out of it? What's the ROI? How are you going to deliver on value for them because they're not they're not they didn't sit here and they're not begging for your content not yet not if you haven't gotten to a thousand followers a thousand subscribers no one's begging for your content yet so what is what's the what's the real opportunity for a brand here and also why is the audience going to be okay with that hmm. exactly i mean i know that that's harsh chat tell me how you feel about what i just said i know that that comes off harsh i know it might feel like you don't understand we're small. We don't have it's like it's like, but that's not like let's take let's think of it as a viewer. If I'm a viewer, you're interrupting my content with the brand deal, but you haven't also like you you're, okay, you're at you're at how many videos now? Or like it's not you get what I'm saying? It's like, wow, really? Already you're interrupting the relationship that we're trying to build here? It's okay. That's a little early, I think. Yeah, I had somebody ask me uh, a week ago or so. Uh, they were brand new or whatever. They were like, yo, when should I start working with brands? Or when should I start reaching out to work with brands? And I'm like, get some videos under your belt first. Like, figure out what you're doing before you reach out to brands. And it's kind of like what you were saying earlier, Roberto. You need some experience before you start reaching out to brands. You need, a, you, need a, you need a foundation. You just can't, like, get off the bus asking for brands and reaching out to brands. What, what do you have to offer them at that point? Because, like you said, Roberto, it's not just what you can do for not what the brand can do for you it's what you as creator can do for the brand so you gotta, you gotta get a little experience for, for uh first before you start reaching out to brands in my opinion you should you but, should want to hit a home run every time you work with them that should yep. be your goal so it, like i'm not going to approach a company that i can't give them you know a return on what they're going to give me like i'm not going to do that if i uh, you know if i can find a brand that closely aligns with what i'm doing and something that my, i know my audience would respond to because of the trust that we've built up together then that's something that makes sense. But, you know, one thing like, you know, you just have to kind of be careful with that. But also always remember, you have to be able to give them back something. If you're going to take, you have to give them back something. So I know like if I'm going to take something from a company, if they're going to give me a thousand bucks, let's say, just as a throwing a theoretical number out there. If I'm going with that deal, if I see that it works for me, I know that by them giving me that thousand dollars, that they're going to get back way more than that in return. I know this because I know and my audience. And remember to make yourself competitive with the other ways they can spend that money. You have exactly. to understand some level of that. And I don't think a lot of people do. They don't understand what else could the brand do with that money that actually would be less risky for them. It's an investment. It's an investment. So make yourself a good investment. That's the thing that other people don't think about, right? Here's another one for you, though. Let's advocate for the creator here. We've advocated for the brands. Let's advocate for the creator. When you're that small and you're vulnerable and you don't know anything, you don't know what a good deal looks like. So the thing is, the sooner you take a deal, the sooner you're going to be taken advantage of, in my opinion, even with undercharging yourself or underpricing yourself, even if a brand says yes to you, and then you throw out a rate, then okay, you could easily underprice. Um, and it's largely due to not knowing better. Uh, yeah. I'll give you a great example. I worked with um, a friend of mine who's a female content creator, a uh, brand approached, really great brand, really creator friendly brand, brand approach wanted to do a six video deal. And she didn't have any idea how to price. So she comes to Big Brother Roberto, right? 
Uh, Cause I told her, it's like, look, you ever doing business, you ever doing anything, you ever get to a place where you're uncomfortable, come to me. I won't even charge you. And I'll tell you straight because we're homies. So she comes to big brother, Roberto. She's like, I'm thinking it's 500 too much. I have 10,000, you know, subscribers. I'm about to hit 11,000 subscribers. It's six uh, videos over the course of six months. So that'd be three grand. I'm thinking $500 a video. Sounds really, that sounds fine, right? Gentlemen, does that sound fine to you? Six videos, six videos, just mentioning the brand, $500 a pop, six videos, six months, three grand total. RA loves the brand, also is an affiliate of the brand. Are we talking about actual like brand integration? We're not talking about full talking about, you know, like not dedicated. We're talking about, we're talking about 15 to 30 second plug in a video. Ah. At their channel size, I still feel that's a bit under. So that's watch just, what happened. Cool. So watch what happened. I told her for her particular type of content and for the quality of her content. Because her content takes good editing, it takes a good minute, films, multiple scenes. It's like, it's very, very nice. It's very nice. Think about like an er almost like an early version of like a Shelby Church or something, right? In terms of quality content, like early version or beta version of what Shelby Church is doing today, but with a smaller creator, okay? So I tell her, your video editing, your production values, everything you're doing, the thoughtfulness and the fact that you've actually, even with that following, managed to make videos that sometimes get 100,000 views, which is why she you know, had those subscribers. I'm like, okay, ask for 1,500 because I can't make you comfortable to ask for anything more than that per video, 9,000 total. If they haggle with you, just stand up for yourself and they're gonna haggle down to 1,200 and at worst case, 800. And regardless of what, you're probably going to end up walking away with double what you would have were comfortable or shy to ask for. And just trust me on this. I just need you to trust me on this, that you're worth it. Comes back to me a week later. They said yes to 1500 without hesitating. They didn't haggle. They didn't wheedle. They said, okay. And, and then let's go. I was like, okay, so you were going to get $3,000 and now you're getting $9,000. And it was because somebody helped you be confident enough to ask for it, explain to you why $1,500 is okay for you and you being able to then show your numbers because somebody walked you through, here's how you present that. Here's how you preach that. Here's what you say when they ask you why or they contradict you or they're like, here's how you handle their objections. Here's how you respond. Here's how you negotiate. Here's how you pitch. I can make videos to I'm blue in the face and I already have about how to pitch, how to negotiate, how to negotiate, how to talk to brands. And no one watches them. No one watches them. Everyone thinks that they're being screwed. Everybody thinks they're being screwed over by brands. Everyone will come up with every reason that they're being screwed over by brands. I'm not big enough. I'm black. I'm this, I'm that. Everyone will come up with a reason. Every reason except for the fact that Maybe I don't know how to negotiate. Maybe I don't know how to price myself. Maybe I don't know how to put together a media kit. Maybe I don't know my numbers cold. Maybe I don't have a, a, a line of language to overcome an objection that is about ROI instead of how I feel. Like any of those reasons. Or maybe I'm too scared to ask for something bigger because then I have to actually deliver on it. And I'm nervous about that because I feel maybe the videos won't perform and then I'm like going to be embarrassed. There's any number of reasons for that. And it very rarely is a situation where creators take any responsibility for why they're not getting what they want out of a partnership. And the thing is, I give it away for free so much, but guess what? I can't even get 10K views on a video about literally how to handle your brand deals. There's literally nothing I can do about it. There's nothing I can do about it. And that's why when people are like, I don't know how to do this, I'm not shocked because no one will watch a video about it. Let me make a video about how to get a thousand subscribers though, where you can start earning a 10th of a penny per view on YouTube AdSense, which most creators don't even make a living off of YouTube AdSense. Oh, people, if I tell how to get 4,000 hours of watch time, that video will get 100,000 views. I can't even get 10K views teaching you for free how to get a brand deal. Real quick, so, that creator that Roberto was just talking about, has she not had that relationship where she could go and talk to Roberto? Has she burned the bridge? She would have been out of three times the money that she was set to make. 
But because she had that relationship where she could go talk to Roberto and ask him about the brand deal, she made three times the amount that she was set to make because she went and talked to Roberto. This is why I tell you all, don't burn the bridge with your fellow creators. Reach out, communicate, maintain that line of dialogue, that line of communication with your fellow creators because you never know when they might be able to help you out. Not just small creators either. There's a creator with over a silver play button creator that I reached out to about uh, there was a brand that wanted them to do a live workshop during COVID. They would have normally had that creator do it in person, normally would have flew them out to do it um, to New York, but definitely couldn't do that during lockdown. And so they did a, a remote virtual workshop instead of a live in-person workshop. That creator would have charged half of what I told them to charge. Half. And, and the thing is, when the brand, when I told them what to charge the brand, the brand was like, they didn't really hesitate. They were like, yeah, you know what? Given what we're asking you to do and like it's COVID and, you know, thank you for respecting our situation. They're like, okay, that's reasonable or that's fair. Because the thing is, I would have normally told them to charge more, but the brand was also suffering due to, due to, due to COVID. So I figured out a thoughtful way for them to respond to the brand in terms of the brand asking for their rate and then what to go back with. I was like, okay, here's how you're going to talk to them. Here is like three things I think they'll theoretically ask. Cause if I was in their position, cause I'm remembering what it's like to work at a company. I approach brand deals, remembering that the human being that is negotiating on behalf of their brand is an employee at a company doing a job. And they're responsible to answer to a boss somewhere down the line. And that they're also thinking about what's in the best interest of the company. They also don't want to be a bad person and screw over a creator. They're not looking, rubbing their hands of, Oh, I'm going to screw over this creator. I'm going to get such a great price. Like, no, they're not doing that. Not rubbing their hands together. Like some fiend. It's just people. So I thought, I think about the other person in the situation. I think about what their job looks like. I think about what's a win for everybody. And I also think about the audience. And then I say, okay, here is how you tell the brand that this is a win for the audience and why. That's your justification for everything. Your justification for everything is literally you're advocating on behalf of your audience. So that's your justification for almost everything. You don't tell them, you don't make it about you. You make it about how this is a win for the audience. And that goes a long way with the brands respecting you too. Because they're trying to win the customer. They want to turn your viewer into their customer. Your role is the facilitation of that. So now you have to advocate to the brand for your viewers, and you have to advocate for the, to the viewers for the brand. You are the bridge between those two worlds. And it's your job to make sure that everybody is winning in that scenario. And you don't have to sacrifice yourself to do it. Oh. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, when you are communicating with brands, you have to realize that you are talking to actual real life human beings. And if you approach it as such, you might have much better results. Indeed. And there, you know, there's there's something to be said for making it on your own steam and yeah, not needing a, a handout. But here's the thing, you shouldn't be looking at it as a handout. You should be realizing that in all humility and all honesty, because here's the thing, I've had this problem. I had the same problem as, as you, my homie. I always thought I had to do everything alone. And I realized that I'm better off respecting my limitations and realizing that other people can create value for me and that I don't have to do everything alone. It's also not a really good idea for me to do anything alone all by myself all the time. And the same way that I create value for people, if I want, I'm like, by doing everything myself, I'm just making myself a martyr. I'm just giving myself a, an excuse to complain and whine about nobody um, wanting to have my back. The other thing when, is that so so it's not that. about asking for a handout. Yeah, it's, and the other thing is that you have to realize you don't know everything. Um, recently, I went to Roberto because I had a question about uh, the process of a brand deal, and he he got me through that question because I didn't know because I I haven't done it. Like, I'm still new to this stuff. So I'm like Roberto, how do I do? How do I go about doing it? Then, but I had to ask you six questions when you asked me one question. I had to ask you six questions to give you an answer. Right, but you gave me an answer though because I knew that I I could reach out to you because I didn't try to do it alone because why? Like I that. Like if I'm being honest with myself, I know that business is not my strong suit. So I'm gonna reach out to other business, more business savvy individuals to get the to get the 411. And I think you uh we all as creators have to realize what our limitations are and then try to interact with people that can help us understand the things that we don't. Understand that you don't know everything. And it's okay not to know everything. It's no like anybody that's trying to shame you for not knowing anything, it's just they're not they're they're not Yeah, no. You have to you have to be 
I didn't know everything when I started. I damn sure didn't know everything when I started. Um, I still learn stuff every day. Remember, I went to Viper's room. Viper has 5,000 subscribers. I went to his clubhouse room and I came back with, I'm not even joking, I came back with uh, pages of notes, like yep. for real. Like I came back with all of these notes and there were all of these people sharing and there's there's people who don't even have an audience, but they work in the industry. Just remember, a lot of people look up to me, they go, oh, 500,000 uh, subscribers. I made like 1500 videos. That's the bigger accomplishment to be very honest. That's the rare thing to do it is more rare to make over a thousand videos in a career than it is to have 500,000 subscribers, believe it or not. And because even the biggest creators, bigger creators than me, in many cases have, they have bigger results, but they have less experience. Sometimes that's just the difference between education versus entertainment. That's why I've worked with channels with up to 6 million subscribers before, because the thing is the successful people in this industry are humble enough to know that they don't know everything. I'm still, even if I get to a million subscribers, there's still going to be people that are at 100,000 subscribers or 20,000 subscribers that I'm going to know still have value for me and know something I don't know because they will have a different experience than me. They will have a different access point. They will have a different background education. There are plenty of people out here who don't have huge followings, but you know what they do? They work in the industry. Like Jeff, there's so much stuff you know that I don't know just because you're behind the scenes at vidIQ. There's right. so much stuff that people who work at TubeBuddy know without a following that they know because of the data that they have access to that I don't. There's people at StreamYard that have data that I don't have access to. They know stuff I don't know. They don't need to be bigger than me. We are too obsessed with vanity metrics, but um, Jeff, could you read Julie's question for me? Sure. It's uh, She says, do you think there will be standardized pricing or some type of an outline that we as creators can follow when we are pitching our rates to brands? Okay, so the interesting thing about this question is I think that I understand where this question comes from, but I also think standardized pricing is a bad idea because no one's a standardized creator. Yep. So if we're, if we're not all the same, views aren't all equal, subs aren't all equal, content isn't all equal just because, it, and that's the other problem I have with people all thinking that they're, you know, they should be getting this or that out of YouTube or this or that or YouTube AdSense or whatever. It's like, first of all, even in YouTube, ad rates are different based on the niche of your channel. Ad rates are based on the niche of your channel. Like if you guys are comfortable with this, cause I'm just, I'll start. If you guys are comfortable, just let me know. But I'll just tell you my CPM, my CPM is 20, $24 on average. Jeff, are you comfortable sharing what your CPM is? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the time of year, obviously, cause I'm in tech, but it usually varies anywhere between seven and like $12. Seven, $12 Viper. Around the same, but usually between like what, five, eight, ten dollars, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are both in the tech niche and that's your CPM. I'm in the marketing and business niche and my uh, CPM is like considerably higher. And it, it's not even because, because both of you, there's a big gap between your subscriber counts and your CPM is the same. But that's because your industry is the same, which means the same type of ads would run. Your revenue is going to be different. I expect you guys to share that, but it's just wildly different. Okay, oh, yeah. which means that with brand deals, we can't have standardized pricing for brand deals because every industry has different budgets, different reach expectations, different market caps. Software as a service can pay better on affiliate and can pay better on almost everything. Brand deals and affiliate because they don't have to have a physical warehouse for the products. They don't have to worry about shipping. They don't have to, do, it's money in, product out. Money in, product out is passive as hell. E-commerce brands, e-commerce brands, software as a service, digital, easy, easy understand, easy to understand why the margins are better on that, right? Yep. But then if you go to physical products, print, retail, print, quality control, they have so many things that get thrown out during the quality control. Physical products, same thing. Quality control stuff gets thrown out. Technology, margins, so on and so forth. Um, it's it's just like, okay, so you can't standardize the pricing for influencer marketing because all influencers are not the same or equal. All niches and product categories are not the same or equal. All situations aren't equal because physical is different than digital. Uh, beauty is different than tech. Tech is different than finance. There's just no way to do that. That's why the biggest bottleneck I find for people when it comes to how much to charge for a brand deal, what do we price, what do we charge? It's the fact that you cannot plug your vanity metrics into some formula and get an answer. 
and there are great tools like social blue book and all that stuff. I find I like, I shouldn't be saying anything negative because I'm an investor. I own equity. Um, I, I bought some shares of social blue book, uh, through, uh, a website or whatever. And I love the team and I've talked to them. I'm a shareholder. I'm a shareholder. And even I will tell you that it's not the end all be all answer you're looking for because it doesn't address any of the other variables in a relationship that you're building with a brand or your value as a creator or, or uh, uh, like, so it's not just down to your metrics. It's not the brands don't even believe that it is. So we can't go there. Not every industry is the same. The, the margins and the available budgets of tech are not the same as beauty are not the same as travel, especially then the pandemic happens. Guess what? The margins change entertainment. Oh, the movie industry can't film and everything. Oh, here's the difference in that. See what I'm saying? Gaming, it's not the same. So trying to I understand why people, oh, it's too complicated. Oh, it's so much to think about. I understand. I'm just trying to tell you, there's not an easy answer and there's not a shortcut. It's not about how much to charge. It's about how to charge. You guys want a flat number. You want me to tell you, oh, you have this many subscribers, charge this much money. You have this many views, charge this much money. And I can't because it's not that simple. It's not that easy. And that would be dishonest on my part to just tell you how to do it like that. Here's how you should charge. I'm going to get into how you should charge in a minute. But gentlemen, we have another super chat. So uh, We got Minnesota and whatnot. Says, As a fan, what are the best ways to support content creators I rock with? I use affiliate links, like and crap, engage on Twitter. What else should I be doing? Uh, actually, you were doing all the things. And the other thing that you didn't mention that you, we would definitely appreciate that you do is that if we do make sponsor content, uh, engage with those with that sponsor content. Um, just to let the sponsors know that you are you value what we are putting out there. So exactly. you're on the right track. Engagement. Engage with the sponsor content, and even if you don't buy from the sponsor, just engage. And if the sponsor has free trials or free uh, tiers, then please sign up and use our affiliate links, which is a great opportunity to remind everybody about our two, excuse me, wonderful sponsors. Uh, StreamYard, the simplest solution for live streaming, bringing in guests and having really great live stream integrations where you can do things like pop super chats up on the screen, uh, graphics, all kinds of things. And it is great for your live experience. Um, and guess what? It's something you can sign up for completely free and it has wonderful affordable plans linked in the description down below. Also, we have another great sponsor called TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is at least in my opinion one of the best if not the best productivity tools and seo tools for youtube and youtube creators and you can sign up for the free tier of that with my link in the description down below or if you decide to get one of their affordable plans you can use discount code roberto's buddy and get 20 percent off because roberto sent you so feel free to sign up for TubeBuddy and Streamyard today also you want to know how you can support creators you can buy people's merch like the awesome right. create something awesome today hoodie that i made with spread shop and this thing is wonderful everybody tells me how much they love my hoodies and stuff like that because i always use the premium option when it comes to print on demand spread shop is also going to be a sponsor of future content so go ahead and, and uh, check them out in my merch shelf under this video you'll see the hoodies and all the other uh merchandise that i have and that is how you can support creators i love that question not only because it segues me into a great plug, but that's the other thing, you guys. You have to know how to advocate for brands. You have to know how to build a relationship with your audience to where someone like Minnesota and whatnot is going to want to ask, how else can I support the creators that I love? So Definitely. just understand that. And remember, another thing that costs you $0 to support the creators you love is to smash the like button. Smash that like button right now if you haven't done it we've got about 200 people watching and everything like that let's add 200 more likes to this video right off the bat for the good old youtube algorithm so just go ahead and smash the like button for me right now that's right man shout out to minnesota and whatnot that is a member of uh he, of my community as well probably a member of many others but super super supportive so i'm glad to see him here yep this all happens because of viewers like you yep boom Absolutely. And funny thing is we're all wearing merch too, by the way, just to be clear to everybody <laughs> in the chat, Viper's wearing his own merch. I think I'm pretty sure Roberto's wearing his own as well. I'm actually wearing my brother's merch. Um, and my brother's merch is done through a nonprofit, which supports him after his stroke for his recovery. So that's, that's why I always wear his merch in my own videos to, to show support for that side of it. But merch can be helpful in so many ways, not just for yourself, but it can also support causes as well. 
Yep. Indeed. And most of the print on demand companies allow you to uh, select that you can donate a certain portion of your profits directly to a charity or nonprofit that is connected with them. And so that's just something to do. And good on you for that, um, Jeff. You know, way to be uh, a real supporter. Uh, we have another question here if one of you wants to go ahead and sure. read that so we can answer. Yeah, we got it. Uh, I am a content creator that makes animations and do a lot of lives, but using an avatar. Is it even possible to get any brand deals? I saw your video and I more or less know my qualities, but I might be too niche. So one of the, my favorite creators is Nuxtaku, and he's what you could call a VTuber. So he's a virtual YouTuber that uses an anima, an avatar and it's animated on YouTube and Twitch, and he gets really big and he gets brand deals. He's not as uh, brand friendly as he could be because that's kind of his gimmick as well, but he has brands that rock with edgier content creators, and there are brands out there that want to do that. Uh, some of your folks like Dollar Shave Club and whatnot. So there are some brands out there for people who aren't super, super family friendly and are a little bit edgier um and so there is definitely plenty of opportunity out there people just have to be willing as much as they don't like hearing it in 2021 you gotta hustle sorry yes i said it the dreaded h word yes you have to hustle or here's an alternative don't hustle but don't complain yeah the other h word humility mm. Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> all right so yeah so like okay either have the humility to hustle or enough humility not to complain that's it so here's the thing about this y'all boom <laughs> y'all don't want to hustle and different dad y'all don't want to put in the work but the brands aren't they don't fall off tree they don't fall off trees and they're not just going to come come at your feet and the only way that you're going to get to a position where they do start falling at your feet is if you do hustle and build an audience up and up to where where you can't uh, you can't be ignored. I think I heard Roberto say earlier today that uh, most of the brand deals they come to him, but why yes. do they come to him? Because he put in years of work and built up an audience to such a such a standard that they can't ignore him anymore. Like they have to come to Roberto Blake. So that in some cases I'm one of the only opportunities. Well, let's be clear. In some cases I'm one of the only opportunities if they want to expand reach into a different audience. Primary example. Two years in a row, I've done uh, content with TurboTax. Why have I done content with TurboTax? There's almost no one in the entrepreneur space that wants to do brand deals that will talk about business and money and taxes in that way because they can either sell their own $1,000 coaching course, right? They can do, sell their $1,000 course, so why take a brand deal? They can... Um, uh, sell their tax business because usually they're a tax attorney or they have a massive referral deal with a tax attorney of some kind through their, their business. If they're in the professional business realm, they have those contacts or they have that business for themselves. So they don't want to cannibalize their own business. So one of the only vehicles then left for certain brands, because remember the content creators in the business niche, most of them right now, and this is just a right now thing right now, I don't have like a $500 course. I don't have a $300 or $500 or $1,000 or $2,000 course. I'm a rarity in my niche. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. I'm not trying to be anti-course. I'm not that. But uh, I want to make the best thing in the world, and that takes a while. So there's that problem. My point is leverage, leverage. If you can sell a $1,000 coaching course, you probably are a little harder to entice to get a brand deal because if you pitch your own thing and you have a large audience, you stand to make possibly tens of thousands of dollars on evergreen content that pitches your own high ticket item. Mm -hmm. So if you can sell something of your own for $1,000, why are you going to take money from a brand and try to then sell their product that cannibalizes your own business? So right. you're competing with yourself at that point. Now, most content creators are not business content creators. So that's a little different if you're a tech creator or an entertainer. But I'm making a point of explaining to you that there are some deals where you could put yourself in a position to where you're almost one of the only games in town or where they only work with the same 10 or 20 people and you're one of them. And that could be very, very good in terms of an advantage. Or if you are the expert or go-to, Jeff, you're not the biggest tech creator. You're the go-to guy in the audio space and you and our boy Gameski can end up selling out entire product categories in Amazon. And there are people with millions of subscribers that cannot do that. There are people with millions of subscribers and people will watch them more and be entertained, but they go to you when they're ready to buy. They go to you when they're ready to buy and they take your word for it, 
not somebody that in their mind might be making a commercial. They go to you. They go to you. They go to you. They go to Gerald and Dunn and Armando for cameras. They go to you and Gameski for audio and headphones. And that's that. And y'all sell out an entire category. Like Armando will empty out BH Photo Video's shelves. You and Gameski will put Amazon in back order queue for weeks. Yeah. And we can prove it. That's the key to it as well. Then something that people have to remember is making sure that you have the data to back that up. So when somebody asks you this question, you can prove your conversion rate. You can prove how much traffic you can move on that product. So I know it now, especially like I've done the, done the work and stuff like that. And this is why I was able to get that deal where a brand sponsored my trip to CES. They paid for the plane ticket. They paid for the hotel. They paid for everything. So why was I able to do that? Because I was able to move something like 50K of their product, you know, and that's just because of my audience. It's a good product. I backed it because I liked it. So it worked. But I was also able to prove that data through my conversion rates for that particular product. When I did more tech content, when I did more con tech content and I was a smaller YouTuber, um, a PR company that works with HP and Dell both sent me laptops back in 2015 and 2016. And I was a smaller YouTuber back then on the way to 100,000. And I wasn't even a, considered a tech creator, but I was somebody who was crushing it when it came to video editing laptops and video editing tutorials to this day. To this day, one of my biggest videos is still advice for buying video editing laptops on a budget, mm. okay? And so I'm an authority in video editing laptops and I got HP and Dell to both send me computers there between $1,000 and $3,000 uh, when I wasn't I Justine, when I wasn't Sarah Dietschy, when I wasn't Marquez Brownlee. And that is real. And they paid me on top of sending me those uh, product units. And you know why? It was because of not only the views that I got in that content, but the fact that I could prove that because they wanted to sell, send me a lesser level of those laptops or like not the flagships or whatever. I was able to prove that I could move about roughly fifty to sixty thousand dollars a month in the laptop category in Amazon because of my uh, stacks of advice on video editing laptops, laptops for students, and all these other budget laptop budget laptops under a thousand dollars. I had enough videos that collectively were just moving so much Amazon at the time for yeah. people who aren't buying the highest end thing and were in the video editing space. Cause I also was making stuff for content creators. So it overlapped and I was able to prove it. Okay. Yeah. The right. It's the right views. Yep. I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier about how he did, he does the deal for turbo tag. Uh, creators also need to be able to think outside the box as far as brand deals as well. Um, for an example, I make tech videos mostly about Apple, but if a Nike or an Under Armour or any other one of those brands like came to me like your wiper, we want to do some advertising on your channel. Obviously, I don't cover clothing, but when I look at my audience demographic and I see that most of my audience are males between the age of 25 and 34, who buy Nike and Under Armour mostly? Male between the ages of 25 and 34, more than likely. So that would be a perfect fit for my audience, even though I don't do fashion content. If Nike and Armour Arbor come to Viper, they're like, yo, Viper, we want to pay you to promote our clothes. Viper's like, hell yes, let's go. So let so me tell you, Viper, let, think outside the box on a brand deal. Let me tell you how I would do a sponsorship deal with Nike, Adidas, or Under Armour. Let me tell you how I'd do it. For me, for me. I would make a tutorial on how to make cinematic videos. I would do a tutorial on how to make cinematic videos. And then I would have featured in it a video project where it's literally, um, you know, the tutorial. And it's like the beginnings of me making what's going to be um, like a video that could be a motivational promo. I would do the work like every day, show up and everything like that. One of those. And then show how I make that cinematic content and how I edit it and what the entire process is. Then I'm releasing and I'm doing a campaign. Then I'm also releasing a video that says I made an ad for Nike. And then it's literally the sponsored video because that video is sponsored by Nike. And then it's like, and you're going to see the behind the scenes. So it then teases and hypes my own video. Then it's, I released the whole, I made an ad for Nike video. And then it's like, you know, and then it's like a reference to the behind the scenes of my, how to make cinematic content video, go watch that tutorial. But now let's check out this ad that Nike had me make. And then I like show like the full ad that's my motivational do the work like 
show up every day, just do it, hustle like thing, right? And then I probably do a, a third video in this series and it probably will be something to do with how to um, film and shoot um, whatever like the film technique I use. So whether it'd be something on a gimbal or how to do a hyperlapse or how to do slow-mo or how to color grade. So it'd be like one more kind of like how to. So it's probably something like how, how to edit. Here's the thing I made and then how I filmed it. So then I have this trilogy and then there's probably something that's like a on some other platform. It might there might be like a behind the scenes or there might be something else um, that goes out or something like that or some kind of exclusive. So like that's how I would put together a campaign. And then I probably also use other pieces of my social media to amplify that, like Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth. And also another way I would probably work that collab out in my favor is what I'd probably do is I'd probably reach out to friends of mine that have audiences that tie into this. And then I would get them to help me and I'd make it a collab project and I would cut them in on my brand deal just to be able to make it bigger, get more views, deliver it for the brand and get more reach on it because then they promote it to their audience because then they're in it. So I would take less money and I would figure that out. And that's how I would work with Nike. That's how I would work with Nike. That's right, Roberto's plan. Right. But my overall Nike, point. Nike, if you're watching, hook me up. <laughs> my, Casey, my, Casey, if you're watching, reach out to Nike. You already took like a couple million dollars of their money. Hook a brother up. Oh, Lord. My, my overall point, you all, though, is that you have to think outside of your niche when you are thinking about potential brand deals. Because at the end of the day, it depends on it, it all comes down to what aligns with your audience. Like what is, what is something that could bring your audience value? Obviously, like I said, I make Apple video, but. I could promote Nike and Unarmor and this, that, and the other because I know that my audience would be interested in that stuff because they wear it. Like Roberto. Roberto, obviously, he doesn't make Nike fashion content, but he could work in content around Nike and things like that because he could he could kind of like fit that into the workflow and how he does his work. So you guys You could fit it into probably you could probably, you could probably fit it into it. the Apple Watch with the fitness side. Right. And even though Hefe, even though, even though he does audio, he could fit Nike on our his content because, again, his audio demographic is pretty much the same as mine, damn near. So, absolutely. And they've partnered with smart tech brands anyway. So, the thing is, you yeah. can make it about fitness and lifestyle tech. You can make it about a fitness and lifestyle journey of yourself or somebody else. And then that's a whole campaign that you're making because that's the other that's the other thing is there's one-off brand deals, AKA one night stands. And then there's like campaigns. And so there's relationships. So there's hookups and then there's relationships. So like, okay, one-off brand deals are like hookups. And then relationships are long-term sponsorships that like are ongoing. <laughs> and actually, uh, I'm actually living proof of this whole thing outside the box because even though my situation is a little different because my deal with vidIQ is pretty much outside of YouTube. But if you are on multiple platforms, then you open yourself up to other brand possibilities that might not be anything on your primary platform. So there you go. Exactly. No, there's so, ways to make money, man. There's so many. Think about it. Viper. Have, Viper, like you're doing really well. I know you can't like, you can't disclose or whatever. Like, right? Viper's got a really sweet deal. Like, so he's got a sweet deal and it's not even on YouTube, what you might consider his main platform. It's on Clubhouse. And the thing is being able to be a hit and grow in new platforms is another advantage. But if you're just like, oh, I'm a YouTuber, oh, I'm a TikToker, if you just make the platform your identity instead of thinking I'm a creator, I'll go wherever, I'll show up and I'll be freaking dope. If you, you know, you have to come with that confidence and you have to be willing to start over from nothing. Because again, Viper, you had to start from nothing in Clubhouse. Almost everybody did, even bigger, there's people way, way bigger than you that don't have the following and loyalty you do in Clubhouse. So, you know, yeah. uh, but let's, let's take the super chat from um, Angela Dennis, do you want to take that one, Jeff? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, any advice or tips on things that you should be focusing on prior to attempting to engage in brand deals specific to beauty channel? Okay. Specific to beauty channels. I've actually coached a lot of beauty channels. So for one thing, I would say, um, do more than YouTube and then start actually doing lifestyle content in Instagram. So uh, for, I, I probably want to do a collab with one of my favorite, um, female content creators around, um, you know, brand deals that might even be like, I, as long as I'm going to do niche brand deal content, 
uh, that doesn't get views, I might as well um, make it as interesting as I can and uh, bring somebody in the collab, and then we can both not get views together. And so to the, um, <laughs> the exult in there. But the the thing with uh, a fashion uh, channel and a beauty channel around brand deals is I would make lifestyle content that then expands you even beyond just being able to do beauty. I would go beauty, uh, fashion, lifestyle, and that gives you a lot of options and expands your brand. But if you don't want to do that on your YouTube channel because of niching for the algorithm, you do it on your Instagram because Instagram lets you do variety if you brand it as lifestyle, right? So under the uh, so under lifestyle, then you as a female content creator get to make a lot of different um, content and show off a lot of different products that you would use and do product showcases there. And it can be really good content for our, and you can do multiple things with it because you can do IG reels, IGTV, Instagram stories, and Instagram posts. So then building a campaign for Instagram with a brand could be very lucrative. And it means if you get you offered a YouTube deal, you can upsell them on your Instagram audience. So you see why this is an advantage. And then if a brand comes to you, but it's not a good fit for your YouTube channel, you could pivot over to your Instagram. So now you have those options. I have less than 25,000 followers in Instagram as they're making this video. I got a $4,000 brand deal on a campaign for doing two Instagram uh, stories with uh, three or four um, slides a piece in Instagram stories, and then one Instagram post plus link in bio. And that was a $4,000 campaign for that. Again, software pays really well. So there's that. Uh, I got another deal that had more deliverables than that, but it was $9,000 deal in Instagram, a $9,000 deal in Instagram. And so think about that. And I'm not huge in Instagram. To be very real with you, I think you can get more money proportionate to your followers in Instagram than you can for YouTube. I know people with like 10, 20,000 followers in Instagram that are making almost full-time creator type money and they can make that at the same subscriber count in YouTube, even with ad revenue, but they can make up some of the difference on that in affiliate marketing. So it's about how you go about it. So what are my tips for uh, beauty channels? One, like make some real good money with um, affiliate marketing. One thing to help yourself out showcase brands and then when you're doing that tag them and pr promoting youtube promoting instagram and tag the brands be on their radar make sure that that pr the people who work in social media, make yourself make yourself unavoidable to the people that work at the brand make sure that if someone said hey have you ever heard of so and so they're like yeah we hear about so and so and everything like that we see them every week like uh, they make good content oh i know who they are yeah they tag us every week or something don't spam them and don't like do uh, like unnecessary things, but build rapport and start acting like you already have the job, whether you're in beauty, fashion, tech, makeup, whatever it is, act like you already have the job. Don't fake that. Don't claim that it's sponsored when it's not, but act as if you already were a brand ambassador. Go ahead and champion the brand like they're cutting you a check. See, people don't like the hustle. They don't like to work for free. They don't want to go ahead and like, they're not paying me. Why would I work so hard and they're not paying me? It's like, work so hard that they feel guilty enough to where they have to pay you. Work so hard to where their fans are saying it's criminal that you're not working with them. Work so hard to where people already assume that you're working with them and think that you are like, you're not disclosing your brand deals. You are like such an advocate for that. Get to the point to where they're hating on you and think that you already are working for the brands. Get to the, like, be so adamant and passionate about what you do and do it so well that people already think you're a shill. That's, That's what I say. Here's the other side of that, though. You can do that and you should do that. But, but be authentic about it, by the way. Be authentic. Right, be authentic. But if you, when you do that, you are going to get hate. People are going to call you a shill. But guess what? They're not paying your bill. <laughs> Haters Thanks. are working for free. Haters are working for free. You know what? No one hustles harder. No one hustles harder for zero dollars than haters. <laughs> no, for real. In a weird way. In a weird way, haters are outworking everybody. Haters Bro, are outworking everybody because they will hustle and hustle and they will show up and they'll be on notifications and they ain't getting paid nothing. And they always there and they always are engaged and they're on top of it. I have never seen anybody put in as much work for zero dollars and zero benefit man Lord. man i wish i had that kind of work ethic <laughs> hats Dude. off hats off to all the haters 
out there on it, taking zero dollars, getting Woo! nothing, getting nothing in return, getting that's nothing right. in return. Like that's like we need to. We yeah. need to be on that level. We need to be on that level. We need to be that passionate. We need to be that passionate. Think about it. Zero ROI. Nothing. Zero ROI. Just for the faintest scraps of attention. My God. Oh, that's the dedication. Ethic. The work ethic. That work <laughs> ethic. That work ethic. My haters, my haters have the greatest work ethic in the game because to be on my content that much, man, you got to give up your whole life. <laughs> Basically. You got to give up your whole life. So like my haters, my haters, they already sold their soul to me and they get, no they get nothing. Because they gave up their whole life. That's right. Bro, me. Man, I mean, it's true. Me. We get, that's the, <laughs> our most loyal viewers, man. It's the most loyal viewers. No, but it's true, though, man. That's 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 new merch right there, though, man. Get get on that get on that hater work ethic, right? There. <laughs> you need to hustle as hard as my haters do. That's right. <laughs> No one hustles like a hater. That's a shirt. That's the shirt. No one hustles like a hater. Don't have merch. Don't have merch, baby. Don't have merch. It's like that hater aid. No one hustles like a hater. Uh -huh. Hater aid brand. <laughs> I'm merch you, coming man. soon. Merch That's coming right. soon. No hey. one hustles like a hater. Get you that hater aid. Oh god, man. Speaking of which, I, I'm gonna have to dip, man, because I have to get ready for my live show. But uh, I appreciate you having me on, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem, Jeff, and everything like that. Jeff, I need to talk to you and everything like that because we need yeah. to get some we need to get some branding done. We need to get some trademarks done, everything like that. I want to actually sell sugar water labeled as haterade and everything like that and make a fortune. <laughs> and like we're gonna go do it, man. We're gonna, nice. we're gonna go so, do it. We're uh, gonna go get this bag. Yeah, what time are you going live? Uh, I'll be I'm going live at three. So I'll be over there doing my thing from about three to four thirty Pacific time. So because we gotta talk, we gotta talk about some of these latest leaks that just dropped. We got some new products coming and I gotta, you know, I gotta hang with my audience, man. My live show, my my community is real and you know, we gotta be there for our communities. Yeah, Dollar. shout out to Jeff. Um when this is over, I'm gonna link his channel down below. But go check out El Jefe Reviews over on YouTube. He's gonna be live at um, I believe it's gonna be 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure you're showing our boy some love. If you love tech, uh don't go subscribing if you ain't gonna watch, but right. go support our boy. Don't mess with his algorithm. Subscribe if you're gonna watch. And remember uh to support your favorite creators by smashing the like button and you know, any other way you want to support, watch content to the end, super chat if you can, buy merch if you can, get the uh, affiliate links if you can, or hit up the brands and, you know, let them know what's up. Cool, man. All right, fellas, I'll catch you in a bit. Later, man. Thank you, Jeff. We always Later, appreciate man. you. Take care, man. Thanks, man. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I hope that answers Angela's question is like, go ahead and just make sure you're cleaning up your social media. Make sure you're acting like a brand ambassador. If you do something with a brand, tag them, shout them out, give them free promotion, make yourself available to them and, um, you know, earn the relationship, build rapport. Uh, you know, don't just, you know, hit somebody up without having said hi to them before, you know, Ooh, I told y'all at the beginning of the stream, that is the most annoying thing ever. Like, when you have no relationship, no rapport, but yet you come into somebody DMs or hitting somebody up, can I can I do something like no, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh no brainer language acts. Is there any other way to prove other than visible YouTube metrics such as subs and view count? Like I keep saying it. I think that affiliate marketing is underestimated. For one thing, you don't need permission. <laughs> like you just you just do affiliate marketing. And if you make sales, you get paid commissions. If you get those paid commissions, it proves that your audience has a loyalty to you and will buy on your say so and that you have authority, real influence, real influence is moving dollars, not just eyeballs. Okay. And so you also are then able to prove that you can create ROI for the brand. If there's an affiliate deal, maybe you can already sell their product and show that you are already making them money. So you can do that. You can do direct affiliate relationships with the brand, or you can go through Amazon, or you can go through, I think, um, there's other ones, especially in beauty and style. So there's all these opportunities and you can prove it. You can also use your own product sales figures. So those things all help. Those are the metrics you want or prove industry expertise. If it's an industry thing, prove your credentials. So some of, the, some of it's that. Remember, there are people who without a following can just be a model and be on the billboard for the ad or just be in the commercial as an actor or actress. I have friends who don't have huge followings, but they out here in Atlanta and they're getting not brand deals, they're becoming the face for advertisements. So think about that. You can prove yourself by being a good, like, oh, you're a real life success story as a customer and a fan of our stuff. Um, you should be 
in the ad and think about it. You could also prove it as a producer and editor to the point of being good enough to say, we should have them make content for our channel. A friend of mine, uh, Panko Bunny on YouTube. Um, so she actually has made like over, like she's made like over six figures a year doing content for other brands on their social media because they're like, you may not have the views, but your social media content is better than our social media content, and we'll just pay you to make our content. So, like, there's a lot of ways to build relationships with brands as a creator. It's not always about your views, your numbers, your reach. Sometimes your content is just so good that that happens. There's another, all right, I'll tell you all a story. Um, Leela from YouTube, who about has, like, what, 70,000 subscribers now? She yep. had 2,000 subscribers, what, 18 months ago or something like that? A brand worked with her at 2,000 subscribers and they paid her really well. I won't tell you what the deal was, but I can tell you the brand. Adobe, uh, her main brand deal, Adobe. Adobe reached out to her when she had 2,000 subs. Now she reached out to your boy and negotiated a better deal than she would have gotten otherwise. So like there's, there's all kinds of opportunity, yeah. but I would tell you that if you have low subs and views and things like that, maybe what you focus on is the relationship with your audience before you add one more thing to your plate. Because, all right, you're working a nine-to-five job, you're building a relationship with your audience, and now you're going to bring in a brand on top of everything else. That's a lot. That's a lot. Just saying. Yeah, it's like I said earlier. Get some experience under your belt before you start going after brand deals. Because, again, when you go after these brand deals, you are going to have to give them some value in return. It's not about what they can do for you. It's about what you can do for the brand. It is, it's a two-way relationship. It's not just a one-way relationship. So... If you are going to reach out to the brand, make sure you are up to snuff. Make sure your skill level is at a point where you can provide value to the brand. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of the, another shirt, dude. My haters <laughs> hustle. My haters hustle. <laughs> oh, you're upset, man. You know that, bro. Yeah. Sell out. Well, I'll sell it out, dude. Oh, God. So, no, that was the comedy portion of our stream. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's like... So there's a, um, and by the way, guys, don't mind Nightbot. Nightbot is something I'm testing on all of my streaming platforms. I'm going to kill your Nightbot. I'm going to kill Oh, he, like my, my, my Nightbot is like, um, very annoying. my Nightbot is a little, like, he's a little much, huh? He's out of control. All right. I might check, uh, I might check the, uh, the, uh, what you call it. I might check the, for one thing, I got to put my regulars in there because then it won't, um, hate on my regulars. And then two, I've got to adjust probably the settings, but like <laughs> Nightbot got the jokes though. <laughs> yeah, Nightbot yeah. control. <laughs> um, so let's see. I'm going to let's go ahead and we'll at least uh yeah. <laughs> okay, there. I think I made some adjustments to it. And so that should tone down Nightbot just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so, you were gonna say something, Viper. I mean, going back, like, like we've been saying this stuff all, all pretty <clears throat> long. Basically, when you're first starting out, you might not get brand <clears throat> deal, but you can definitely establish a relationship with potential brands you want to work with. <clears throat> um, tag them on social media if you are putting out content that relates to that brand. Like, if you brought a certain product from them or whatever, like that. Tag them in it when you post pictures or whatever of it, or if you make a video about a certain product and. You want to work with that brand in the future, but you're just starting out. <clears throat> Add them in, let them know that you made a video about it. Like, there's a whole bunch of ways to do this stuff, y'all. It's just, it's not just about getting money all the time. Sometimes it's just about building up that foundation, building up that rapport. So when you get to that level, when they got to think about paying you, you're not just some random hole in the wall. They know who you are. And then that conversation will go much, a lot more smoother when it comes time to get that cheddar. Game. Indeed, indeed, it's um, uh, it's something that um, it's something that you have to think of. Like we talked about creativity, we've talked about thinking outside the box and stuff like that. Let me see if there's like some straight up, like hard answers we can uh give people because I talked about like how to charge. Let me give you guys a little sample of how to charge. So you can use something like Social Blue Book, but that's just about your reach. Your reach is just one part of how you charge for a brand deal. Because what we like, what we need to talk about is we need to talk about, okay, yeah, you have your reach. What about your reputation? Is there any part of your reputation that makes you more valuable? And your reputation isn't your view and follower sub count. So do you have expertise? Do you have a background and a degree in this? Do you have, have you won any awards? Are you somebody who has a reputation like Viper where Viper has interviewed 
huge creators. So do you have a network that like elevates your status a little bit? Are you connected? So like, what's your reputation worth? What's your word worth? That's something that can be powerful. Okay. So uh, proof of ROI. Do you have a reason where you can prove something like the buying power of your audience or your salespersonship? So like proof of ROI, proof of, um, you know, uh, what is it? Key performance indicators, right? So that's important. Conversions. So if you can prove conversions or you can prove the stake in your audience, then it makes sense. All right. Here's another one for you. Your uh, quality of work itself, the value of your work itself. Because remember, it's not just about, oh, I'll do a brand deal and put it on your channel. Is your quality of work good enough for the brand to just even put it on their channel? Because you can get that deal. That's a different type of brand deal. That's licensing. As for your reputation, it might be worth it for a brand. Like it's not about content. They could just fly you to an event. And you could do a brand deal where you work with the brand at the event. You realize that like people like I Justine and Marquez have been host for events. That's a paying gig. That's a brand relationship to be a host and event, being able to be an interviewer, being able to do that. Those are things, those are relationships. Um, what's another one? Another one is your expertise in something could mean that's like, I want to send it to you because your reputation says, that if you think it's legit, if you run a test, if you do that, then people will know that it's the real deal, okay? Because you could have that reputation. Our boy Technically T, he's not the biggest content creator, but every case company knows that if T likes their case, people will trust it to be legit. Yep, definitely. So there's things like that. There's people who do drop tests. There's people who do cut tests. There's people who do all kinds of things, battery tests. So if you're the, okay, if we send this product to the person who always does the battery test, they're not the biggest content creator, but they will be the person that we can use to legitimize ourselves. So we'll send them something. We won't pay them for that, but we'll send them something. And if we send them something uh, before it comes out or when it comes out, they'll be able to test it. Their audience will believe it. And if they like it, we're good. If they don't, we got to fix our product. Because sometimes that's the other value. Can you help the cus the brand make the product or service better for the customers if you're involved with the brand? That's another part of a relationship you can have. So like your reputation, your quality, your reach, uh, your, your body of work, all of those things can help you charge. Because remember, quality of work, even without an audience, you could just make money even without an audience making the content for the brand if your content is that good. If your body of work is so good, the brand might say, I don't want you to post on your channel. I want you to post on my channel because I need my stuff to look that good because it's like, I'm not getting it. I'm like, I'm not doing it as well as you. I might get more subs, more views or whatever, but my quality isn't your quality. So I need you to bring that quality to my brand and they might pay you for that for real. And they might still say, you can still do your thing, but I need you to pay you. I need to pay you to do my thing. And they might uh, pay you for that. They know, literally. I was yeah. going to make also a good point about uh, wearing a brand, merchant, different things like that, and different other ways to promote the brand too. Yeah, I'm looking for that. Uh, I'm looking for that comment so I can post it. But yeah, there's so many things. And again, the idea of what if I post this to the brand's content, that's not something you can plug into a social blue book or whatever. So that there's no... There's no formula for that one. You have to say, okay, what am I going to charge to do this? And you have to start thinking for yourself about what is it worth for me to do that and to put that on a brand's channel. And maybe I'm credited for it. Maybe I'm not like, cause guess what? That's no different than you being paid to be on a TV commercial. What if you were paid to be on a TV commercial? That has nothing to do with your views or followers or subscriber count either. So then you'd have to figure out, oh crap, what's my rate? What's my price? Oh, I can't factor in my views and subs into that. <laughs> I think that the problem for influencers is they're obsessed with the views and the subs and the followers and that they think that's the only thing that makes them worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, uh, some people are a little bit too surface level with this stuff and it's so much deeper than surface level. We are like, <clears throat> you talk about this a lot, Roberto, but we are just in the infancy of the creator economy. There is so much potential for creators earning potential even for creators out there right now. There are so many different ways to make money as a creator and you have to get past the surface level vanity metric. Like it's so much deeper than that. It, and it doesn't like, like we've been talking about today, your channel size is almost irrelevant. Uh, Roberto and Andrew have been, they, Andrew Roberts and Roberto both have been saying it for years. Sub count doesn't even matter. Like you can get online and make money today 
and have a small sub count or whatever the hell you want to call it. But I know people who are millionaires without social media followings. I know millionaires who come to social media and they hire me because they're struggling to grow on social media, even though they're millionaires. Not yeah. everyone's Graham Stephan. And even Graham Stephan was a small YouTuber at one point. Yeah. You gotta be pulling for support though. Yeah. Throw, he couldn't throw money at he couldn't throw money at it. Yeah, you know, he wanted to. In fact, he thought he couldn't do YouTube, so he wanted to originally just invest in somebody else's YouTube channel and own a piece of somebody else's YouTube channel. He's like, I don't have the personality to be a YouTuber. No one's gonna want to hear my story and everything, or I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look like an idiot because they're just gonna tell me how privileged I am, even though I worked for everything and blah 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 blah. blah. Like Graham didn't even think he could be a YouTuber, and now he's one of the biggest YouTubers. He's definitely one of the most successful YouTubers, and so. There's so many opportunities. You could literally, without ad revenue, you could go ahead and you have a small audience. Guess what? Small but loyal audiences, like think about it. You're you're fighting for what? To get a dollar for every 1,000 views? Let's talk about it. If one person buys your t-shirt or hoodie out of every 1,000 views, you make more money than YouTube ever will pay you for 1,000 views. YouTube's gonna pay you like a dollar, $10 if you make Friday's content. Okay, cool, you can make that same $10 selling a hoodie. And boom. And that's, so one out of 1,000 people. Uh, Peter McKinnon, you don't, you don't want to sell hoodies? You're a photographer. Uh, Peter McKinnon uh, with the Let's Pats. Lizzie Pierce with the Let's Packs and the photo presets. And boom, $15, $25, $30 for every one person out of 1,000. You think only one person out of 1,000 buys their presets and everything since their photography and filmmaking channels? Nah. So they're definitely making more money for every 1,000 views than that. More money than YouTube can pay them for that. YouTube's going to pay them five or eight dollars on CPM um, and then take half Meanwhile, for a thousand views. Meanwhile, for that same thousand views, two, three, four people are going to go out and buy a 30, 40, 50 dollar digital product from them. And they're going to make hundreds of dollars off of that same 1,000 people per 1,000 versus YouTube paying them dollars or pennies even for it. Think about it. Think YouTuber, think. <laughs> yeah. Like the uh so the that's that's the digital side. That's e-commerce, digital, print on demand as well. Then you have affiliates, affiliates. You can go to Amazon just telling people to use your audible link. Zero dollar cost to them, five dollars for you off of every audible sale. Think YouTuber, think. There's just money right there that you might not even get because oh, you're worried about a tenth of a penny per view from YouTube when every one of those views that uses a free link would be worth $5 on Audible? Go to robertoblake.com slash Audible right now and get two free eBooks, at, sorry, two free audiobooks and also put $5 in reverse. I'm kidding, but you can actually go to robertoblake.com slash Audible right now and get free audiobooks, two free audiobooks, $0 cost, robertoblake.com slash Audible. I'm literally showing you exactly how you would do it. I, I get like, by the way, if none of you are signed up for Audible, I'm not joking. Literally, tab over in your browser, go to robertoblake.com slash Audible and get a free trial of Audible. Pick two free audiobooks of your choice. And guess what happens? It costs you zero dollars and you're supporting me. It is literally that easy for you as a content creator, even with a small audience, to extract more value by creating value them worrying about AdSense. And again, before you're ever ready for a brand deal and your prep for a brand deal is proving it with e-commerce, your own sales, proving it with affiliate revenue. And then when you go to a brand and say, I can sell, I can sell, they don't have to take it on faith. You have actual numbers to back it up. No doubt. For real. Also, so back up, back it up. Also, when you're a new creator and you are not eligible for YouTube monetization, monetization you can do things like sign up for buy me a coffee page or patreon so people can donate to you directly so you also have that option so which gets you into memberships and also donations same thing with twitch when you reach twitch affiliate but even if you're not a twitch affiliate you can still have a patreon so you could have paying members people who can support you for one two three five dollars a month or one-time donations and you can do that with patreon buy me a coffee PayPal, any number of ways. So you could get support that way, or like Twitter's letting people do that now. Uh, Clubhouse is letting people do that now. So memberships and just fan support is another model right then and there. Having people who support you is another way to prove that you have an invested community and you can build that up over time. So again, the creator economy is amazing. It's just nothing but opportunity. People want to be out here glass half full crying about what they don't have, crying that they're not getting the attention. And the thing is, be too good to ignore. Be too good to ignore. And remember, small but loyal tribe is uh, a lot more valuable than a bunch of strangers 
that ain't really in it, that ain't really committed, like those casual people versus the real ones. So think about it. Thank YouTuber. Think, bro. If you like, a, if, <laughs> the cool thing is, if you really are in it just for the money, you have a myriad of options at your disposal if that's what you want. But it, it obviously, it's much bigger than making money. But if that's what you want, you can do that. Yeah. So Mad Morph says, do you know about TikTok sponsorship pricing flat rate one per what uh, or per view? What's the play and how do you price my offers very wildly? Here's a hack for y'all. Ask the brand what their budget is and then tell them what they're going to get for that price. Ask them to give you a number and then tell them what that gets them. If you don't know what to charge and you're early in your career and you like, I don't know what I'm worth or whatever. That's a real good way to figure out what somebody to say, okay, what's your budget for that project? Okay, what are you expecting for that? Okay, that's what you expect. That's how much you have. Here is what I'm going to do. That's a way to do it. That is a way. That is an option. Because again, if you can't figure it out, because again, no magical formula. It's not, oh, I have this many views. I have this many followers. I have this, I have that, uh, plug it into a thing, calculator. Aha, magic answer. Nope, doesn't work that way. Art of the brand deal, art of the brand deal. So if you don't know how to do that and you don't know how to negotiate, here's the simple way to negotiate. Hey, I really want to work with you. This is a yes. You're one of my favorite brands. But honestly, I just need you to be straight up with me about what is the budget and what you normally do with creators like me. And then I already said I wanted to work with you. I already said yes. I just need to figure this out. What's the budget and what are you usually expecting for that? Okay, so that's the budget. That's your expectation. Well, here are my other three questions. Okay, so with all of that, here's what we can do. I will give you this and I will give you this. Again, this is already a yes for me. I think that this price is good for these things. And I just need to know when we're getting started. And that's how you close. And that's how you close. The end. That's how you close. The end. Watch this for the replay value. I literally just told you how to close when you don't know what to do. Damn. Whew. Think about it, Viper. It's like you've already done your first brand deal. It's like what I just said there, that makes sense when you think about what you had to go through. Yeah, perfectly. And I've heard that's not the first time I've heard uh, that whole tidbit about asking the brand what their budget is. That's not the first time I've heard that. So that's if you don't know what to do and you don't know what's fair, because here's the thing, the easiest way to get out of underpricing yourself, the easiest way to get out of underpricing yourself is to find out what they're willing to pay and then to tell them what you're willing to do. Oh. So we have a super chat here from Ryan. It says, uh, is it possible to be on both sides? We've had big influencers reach out to us to make them make, um, items, but also want to be noted by brand. So here's the thing. So Rhinus, it looks like Rhinus Leatherworks. You guys have your own business and you have a service wherein you create something for people. You do leatherworking stuff. So it's kind of a service that then results in a product. You can do both sides of things. It just depends on how you're positioning your own um, it depends on how you're positioning yourself. Take me, for example, I work with brands and I coach creators and I sell my own digital products and assets. And I have a digital agency that makes media kits that creators use to, uh, you know, work with brands. I have a music brand that I've developed with copyright for music for creators, Zen Buster Music. I'm playing every angle of this industry. The only thing I'm doing is not legally double dipping by not representing creators in any official capacity. That's the one line that I don't do as far as having a talent agency. So that's like the one thing where I don't have a conflict. I don't do a conflict of interest. I can take as many sides of this industry as I want, as long as I don't have a conflict of interest. So you can work with brands, but then you can also definitely work with creators. And if you want to be noticed by brands, because think about it, you're a business too, but you're also creating content and you're in a specific space of influence, just make boundaries and say, here's what I'm not going to do because then it competes with my own business. Because there's things I don't do because then they compete with my own business. And there's things where I don't care if it competes with my own business because uh, people will make a choice of whether they want to do this or do my thing. So the thing is, I, and then the thing is, if a brand's uncomfortable with doing with me representing them, even though I make something similar, that just tells me that they, in my mind, I'm like, oh, you're actually worried about my thing being better than your thing. So, I mean, you get what I'm saying? So I, I would just think of it from a draw your boundaries, make a list of who you actually want to work with, 
and then stick to your list of who you actually want to work with. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Uh, you want to read that one for me, Viper? Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, so we got a super chat from Angela Denise. She says, I am in the... She said, I am indie. I need to step up my game, Ethan. I am very aware that I need to increase my quality on my channel, yet I am still growing an audience and earning money from affiliate marketing. There hey. you go. That's what I like to hear. Ooh, hey, self-actualization as a creator is huge, man. You have to be able to analyze yourself, step away from the feeling part of it, step out of your emotions, and figure out what you can do better, what's, what's working, what's not working. Because that's the only way that we as creators get better if we we are able to just step back and assess the situation in real time. So shout yep. out to her. SG, SWGA Sickle Cell Awareness says, I've been making money with pharmaceutical companies for my expertise in uh, sickle cell and heart disease. See, there you go. Like expertise can, oh, excuse me, expertise can be leveraged. Again, uh, getting content creators to take taxes seriously. That's why TurboTax worked with me. I have some of the only videos on YouTube with taxes, freelancer taxes. I'm one of the only ones. And it's like, it's really good content. I'm about to make another one. I, it's not sponsored by anybody, but I'm going to be plugging some affiliate stuff in this next video about taxes. Don't be shocked if in 2022, TurboTax or somebody else reaches out to me and wants to do tax content again after I get like, because I think this next video I do on taxes, Viper, it's like how much money I pay in taxes on my blank a month income. That's going to be like, that's going to be, okay. So yeah, the video, video is going to be, how much do I pay on taxes on my $25,000 a month income? That's, that's the video, right? That video on taxes will be one of the most comprehensive breakdowns. That's because the thing, content creators will love it. Entrepreneurs will love it. People who are just curious, looky lose will love it and I'll get a bunch of traction. Don't be shocked if account some accounting company or Bench or Gusto or TurboTax or anybody uh, comes to me next year and wants to do uh, some sponsored content on taxes again. Cool. Roberto, asking what the budget is up front. I didn't know I could do that. I love this and you guys gave us the words, so I needed this, thank you. See, there we go. You gave you the real, you gave you the real deal. I guarantee you this will not get 10,000 views, Viper. Are you sure? Because usually your streams do get around 10,000 views. Eh, sometimes. I don't think this one will. I'd be shocked. Jonathan Boyd, appreciate all, all you do. Hope you both have a good week. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, but no, you know, the community in the live streams, if it doesn't get to 10, I don't, it doesn't bother me nearly, nearly as much. But the main thing is, the main thing is like the fact that people don't even know that they can just ask the brand to just like, okay, what do you know? Like, again, the words are, I already want to work with you. This is already a yes for me. You're one of my brands on my list of brands to work with. And uh, this is everything that I want to do and so on and so forth. But I just need you to be honest with me about the budget. What is, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? You must have an idea in mind. Like, I know you already have, just tell them, I know you have a number in mind. I just need to hear what it is so we can move on. And then they'll usually say, we were thinking, or what we normally do is this. And then you go, okay, great. So now I know, here's what, like, here's what my other questions are. Well, what about licensing? What about this? What about exclusivity? Um, okay, how many days until payment? Are we talking net 15 days until payment? Net 30 days until payment? Net 60 days till payment? What's the deal here? Okay, can if I'm gonna take this price, can we budge on how quickly I get paid? Okay, if I'm gonna do that price, can I get half up front if I'm doing that price? Because I would normally expect to get this much more. So since I'm not taking that, I'm gonna say yes to your budget. But can you get can you work with me on how quickly I get paid or give me some of it up front? Like, see, there's the art of the brand deal, negotiating for what you want. Oh. Sounds like sounds like my next ebook. See, Actually, uh, let me talk about something that you said in one of your recent videos that I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, you said that as creator, when you want to work with brands, you should write down a list of a hundred brands that you want to work with. Yeah, your dream one hundred list. Yep. Yep. Your dream one hundred. Your dream one hundred list, and then once you write that list down, put yourself into a position where you could potentially work with those brands down the road. And I just found that that was very interesting because, again. At creator, especially starting out, we don't think about it in that total like context, but that is actually a solid piece of advice. Like, 
thinking about the brands that you want to work with and then, like you said, dressing for the job that you want, putting yourself and your content in a position that one day down the road, you might be in a position to work with those brands that you want to work with. Exactly. It is the thing that I teach all of my coaching clients, and we've covered this in my Awesome Creator Academy group program. If you guys want to work with me one-on-one or you want to join Awesome Creator Academy, it's linked down below. Just go to awesomecreatoracademy.com. But I teach this to my coaching clients, whether they're small YouTubers or big YouTubers. Remember, I've coached people. I've coached people that have half a million, a million, two million, six million subscribers because not all of them have every business model in the creator economy. So the thing is, they know, hey, Roberto, you have industry experience and you've worked with other people and you've worked behind the scenes with brands as a consultant. There's things they know that they don't know just because they know how to build an audience. They put all of their energy into putting an audience. What they didn't put all their energy into is then building a business to support what they're doing and knowing how to build some of those other relationships. So this is what I try to teach people. I try to give as much of it away as free as I can, but then there's also people who's like, okay, I'm in the fashion niche. I'm in the gaming niche. I'm in the this or that. I can't literally make a video for every niche in YouTube. It wouldn't make sense, but I can work with people one-on-one or in group discussions around that kind of thing because that is practical and it makes sense. And then also just having other creators in a group to talk to is valuable to people because then they can compare things. You can compare rates. You and I both know that one of the big hacks is talking to other creators behind the scenes and in DMs or in Facebook groups or wherever and being able to get like comparisons, not that you're supposed to be comparing like, but to have a baseline of like, hey, this is what I'm doing. What are you all doing? Are we operating in the same way? Are we being consistent? Is there a, a standard operating procedure that I'm ignoring and everything like that? So, you know, it's, it's just really important to be able to talk to people who might know something you don't know, because then you can move like they move if it might be a better fit. Mm-hmm. Adrian Reddix, Tech Dad Journey. Thank you. Uh, love that the tech community shows up for us, man, so much. No question. Just want to thank you and Viper for all of the info here and on Clubhouse. Thank you. Yo, appreciate, appreciate that. that. Thank you, man. Showtime. Showtime. Thank you for the $10 super chat. I'm a fintech startup in the online mortgage space looking to go into pitch a VC. I'm not a YouTuber. Any thoughts on how I can use your same methodology to make my company attractive to investors? Actually, yes. First of all, consider actually building up a brand around your fintech startup. Actually start thinking about that and start thinking about building relationships with people in the finance niche in social media in terms of then building up a networking relationship of people that you can say, oh, these people are vouching for you. Remember what me and Viper said about how, hey, sometimes we'll vouch for another creator or we'll pitch another creator to a brand. So reputation and the people who can vouch for you is a big deal. And that could help you in terms of that pitch deck for VCs. So think about it, knowing, oh, people who have a reputation to lose are backing your project and are down for this and are willing to put their name on the line, that becomes interesting. That's a credibility play. So you can use what I'm saying as part of that credibility pay. Another one is look like you're the real deal. Don't look like you're, you know, look like you're competitive. Don't look like a startup. And by that, I mean, go and pay what it costs to have a real designer. Go and pay what it costs to have a really good logo made, have a really good website made, have really good branding, pay a graphic designer. Don't make a pitch deck yourself in Canva. Canva, pay a professional designer to make you a pitch deck the same way I tell creators. Hey, you can hire me or somebody. You could do it in Canva if you have no money. You can do it if you're a content creator or if you're uh, you know, building a product or whatever, you can make your presentation decks in Canva for free. On the other hand, you could hire a brand designer or an agency. If you're a content creator, go to createawesomemedia.com. You can hire an agency or a designer to build you something that actually can sell. So I would say to you as a tech startup, hire a real graphic designer and hire someone and say, I need you to make me look like a company that has a multi-billion dollar valuation, even though I ain't got it like that. (laughs) (laughs) Like, go ahead and make my stuff look better so that I'm not an embarrassment when I go to this company, here's what's in that company's portfolio. Here's the brands that's in that company's portfolio that I want money for. Here's the other startups they've ever backed. I can't look like I do not belong on that same cereal aisle. (laughs) That'd be my answer. Like it's all about brand. It's all about reputation. It's all about looking the part. It's all about um, making sure that 
you're dressed for the job you want instead of the one you have, as cliche as it sounds. There's that word again, reputation. Man, so much of what we do is reputation based and reputation focused. Important. We're in the repu we're in a reputation based industry and business, man. It's like this is like this is a reputation based business for real. All right, like, I got a question for you, Roberto. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the first brand reached out to me. I think when I had around 100 subscribers, a cake company, Ranky, reached out to me to uh, to review their cake and got 100 subscribers. So do you remember the first brand that reached out to you? It was so long ago and I've done hundreds of brand deals now. So because, again, I've been around for eight years. I've been around for eight years. So like I've made over 1500 videos and 2000 live streams. I'm like. I technically, as far as paid brand deals, I think technically. No, I'll give me your first brand to reach out to you, period. Paid or not paid. Well, first one I went after was I went after Lexar. I went after Western Digital. I went after Seagate. Jeez, I don't remember who reached out to me first. It might have been some small uh, tech company or something. I don't remember, to be very honest with you. But here are the ones I do remember that reached out to me. I mean, the best relationships I have. I mean, StreamYard reached out to me. TubeBuddy reached out to me. Uh, Sony reached out to me through a PR company. PR companies reached out to me on the behalf of brands. A PR company reached out to me to do the HP and um, Dell deals back in 2015, 2016. So that was early in my career compared to now, because that's several years ago. That's like what, four or five years ago. So that's, um, it was the PR companies. PR companies are also underrated. Edelman is a great PR company. Sunshine Shack, Saks, Sunshine Shack, so standard. Edelman are great PR companies. They're probably the ones that I've probably worked with uh, the most. Um, oh, excuse me. If you're not working with a brand directly, it's often that you end up working through a PR company. Yep. And so those are usually the ones that I've worked with in the past. There's also, there are companies out there that are basically influencer marketplaces that are like kind of, um, they're kind of like the uh, e-harmony of matching creators with brands kind of deal. They're kind of like a, you know, swipe left, swipe right type almost deal or whatever. So Famebit used to be one, but they got acquired by Google and now it's a different service and it's on the back end. And so it's not like you can apply. It's a, another, oh, we come to you. So, um, you know, YouTube brand connect was acquired. Famebit became YouTube brand connect. So now there's an agency, a talent PR like type agency within YouTube and Google that goes to creators, but it's concierge. You can't pitch them. They come to you. Uh, and I've worked with them before. I actually did an ad campaign for Google before. So uh, through them. So that happens. The PR teams within companies, that's another thing and everything. YouTube's worked with me on that before um, for stuff as well. The, the thing I will say is that if you go to conferences and events when the world opens back up, that's where you're going to meet people in terms of people in the industry, whether it's the PR companies, the marketing managers at the brands, the people who can do those deals with you. So that is what you can do in terms of that. That's why like actual networking relationship in person can matter a lot. <sighs> who came to me? Like I said, the PR companies came to me for sure. TubeBuddy came to me, StreamYard came to me, Epidemic Sound came to me, like all those uh, creator centric brands have all come to me. Storyblocks, all of those have come to me at different points in my career. The PR agencies, I think, are the earliest, some of the earliest ones. And then I think, God, who else? Yeah, I just can't remember just because it was so long ago. Gotcha, okay, okay. Yeah, Mad Morph, thank you for the $5 euro. Uh, thanks, they usually reach out and ask my rate. I've had brand deals take my price without negotiation, so maybe I undervalue. Next time I'll try that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, question. When you started out at zero, what was your first biggest move? Selling shirts, affiliates. When I started, it was freelancing. I went services, six business models of the creator economy. I went with services first. Then I would say I went affiliate. Um, but before I ever got on YouTube, I actually was doing print on demand before I ever got on YouTube. So you could argue I was doing shirts and e-commerce before YouTube because I was doing things like Cafe Press, Zazzle, Deviant Art. I was selling my own posters and artwork back then. So you could do those things. So uh, services, uh, e-commerce, affiliate, then YouTube eventually started paying, but it wasn't a lot. I made almost no money on YouTube for the first three years, Viper. I was in an MCN brand deal for two years where they took 50% of my money. 
So uh, that's a horrible deal, by the way. No one should ever do that. But think about it. So I like I got really screwed in the early part of my career. Maybe that's actually why I ended up helping creators is because I got screwed in my early career. I haven't I hadn't thought of that. That's probably why. I think I think the fact that I uh, got screwed on the MCN thing and nobody told me any better and I was locked into a contract uh, that was not good for me and I didn't get anything really out of it. I think that might have been what really started me wanting to do content that helps creators in like 2016 because I spent two years of my early career when I didn't know better um, having 50% of my money get got for no reason. Yeah, I can imagine that that would not be the That's probably move. But it probably led to like why I've become a creator coach. It's like it's probably why I help content creators at this point is literally two years of a contract I couldn't get out of. That that would that would make sense. That does it. That that's a really good oh that'll that's a hell of a motivation now, isn't it? To like yeah. okay, like don't end up in my situation. Let's go. Like so uh yeah, when I started out, I did freelancing. So you guys could be on Fiverr making money every single day if you really want to hustle. Affiliate marketing, again, hustle e-commerce hustle and then if you're trying to do that passive life you could upload to youtube and hope for adsense and then and then you can hustle some brand deals and then if you build a community people will sign up for it they'll be members so do that no doubt you know roberto i think uh, i think we pretty much covered the gamut of everything we needed to cover today at least for now at least for now without a lot a ton of structure i think like we really answered the main questions that people have, because I think, you know, uh, again, I'll make some videos that are literally one question at a time. Like I'm going to probably answer like the 10 big questions all in their own video with my series that Spreadshop, StreamYard and TubeBuddy will sponsor. So I think that's where we will do that. I do. Um, our buddy uh, Jeff Freedom Lawyer says, where do you find graphic designer and what should I expect to pay for a legit website with good bells and whistles? Ask for referrals from people who have already gotten websites for them built. Um, so Jeff, Andy Rivera, my friend Andy Rivera, she actually could probably help you with web design uh, for people who can't afford to go directly to a designer uh, that is independent. There's deals. You have to look for the right ones. Fiverr is out there, and that could be affordable for some of y'all if you don't know a graphic designer. But reach out to your network and see... If you have a friend who has a website and if they didn't build it themselves, ask them who did it and then say, okay, how much is that? And then work that out. Or if your web, your friend did build their own website, find out how much they'll charge you to help you out. And if you can get a friends and family discount, or if you just want to respect their prices, pay uh, someone, you know, who built their own website to build one for you too. So hire someone off of that. And if not, you can go to Fiverr. And also, again, my agency, Create Awesome Media, we do some of that stuff, but we ain't cheap. Just so you know, we ain't cheap. Fiverr's cheaper. Um, so uh, you could do that. Ooh, Angela has a good question. She said, uh, any advice on brand deals or free product that you should not take? That's why one of the first most important things you can do is make your Dream 100 list of brands because then maybe your filter is, I'm just not going to work with anybody that's not on my list. Mm. So that could be it. If someone's not on your list, but they come to you, you should look them up in social media and make sure that they're a legit company. Do some yeah. Google research. Do yeah. do do at least, if you're going to do a brand deal where you're going to be committed to spending 10 hours on a video, it's worth doing 30 minutes to an hour of research on the company to make sure they're not a scam. Yeah. So I like- Agree more. Also, think about types of brand deals you won't take. I will not work with uh, like- Big oil, big tobacco, big pharma. So I'm out, kiddo. So there's that. I'm. It would take a lot for me to work with any brand that's in the crypto space, to be honest with you, because right now there's too many crypto scams. I can't trust it. I can't trust that I won't have egg on my face later and that I won't be embarrassed later that they then run off with people's like stuff. So like I can't work with crypto brands right now because I can't trust it because there's too much hype and aping around crypto. So like yeah. I have a line in the sand where I won't work with a crypto brand. So I guess the general advice that I would give you is that if a brand or product does not align up with your ideals or something that will value your audience, then don't do it. If it's not something that will bring value to your audience, you probably shouldn't do it. Just saying. That's another good one. Yeah. If it doesn't bring value to your audience, don't do it. 
Look up the reputation they have with creators. Go look at whoever has worked with them on sponsored content before, and then consider hitting those people up and asking like what their experience was working with those brands. Uh, so that matters too. Um, find out if anybody in your space has ever worked with them or if, like how they liked working with them, or if no one's ever heard of them, that might be a red flag. Like, yeah. you know, so like, I don't want to be the test. I want to be the crash test dummy for a brand to be very real with you. I don't want to be the crash test dummy for a brand. I want to be on the hook for that. So I, uh, you know, that's something to really think about. If it's not a win for your audience, if you don't trust their reputation, if you can't find out anything about them in research, if there's any skepticism you have, or if you think that you could regret, if you think that you wouldn't work with this brand, if you were at a million subscribers, probably don't do it then. Like if you're saying I wouldn't stake my reputation on them if I had a million subscribers, then I probably um, wouldn't do it. So that's that's really important. I think that one of the easiest ways to determine if something is a scam is aside from trusting your gut, go ask people about what their experience was for real. Don't just trust a Google search. Go find people and then ask them what their deal was. Now, granted, they might have been financially incentivized, but the thing is, if it's like if you have a good relationship with people in your community, you can usually ask them and they'll be straight up and they'll be like, okay, they're not a scam, but here is how they treated me. Or, oh, they're not a scam, they're legit but they're cheap. They don't pay well. Like I, I, like I got criminally underpaid or it's like, Oh, they paid well. And it was whatever, but man, they were a pain in the butt to work with. They did da, 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 da. They rioted me. They did this. They did that and everything like that. They didn't want to listen. They made me do this. Did that. Like just ask straight up how it is. And this and is why I've been saying all stream long to make sure you have a good relationship with your fellow creators. Yep. Sean's world says got 17 subs in three years, but you should still, it's not even about years, man. It's about how much content are you uploading? You know, um, Mr. Beast, like didn't get anywhere for a very long time. I think four years, he didn't even have, it took, I think it took him four years and 460 videos to get to 10,000 subscribers. It took him a hundred videos to not even get a thousand subscribers. He got 780 subscribers. Like I, I think people don't have realistic expectations about YouTube battle fights. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Don't know um, what to think about your channel because we're not doing channel reviews today, but I do appreciate you. Um, yeah, no channel review today. Yeah, so uh, again, you can't always trust Google or LinkedIn or whatever. So when I want to really know what the deal is, if I can't ask somebody and if they're not like an above board brand and they're not on my list, I just don't bother to entertain it. You don't have to say yes to every brand deal. You don't have to say yes to every brand deal. Do not be, oh, I don't want to turn something down because I'm small or whatever. Just, just like, wait then. Just be patient. Just yep. be patient. You don't I, have to say yes to everything. Just be patient. Dude, uh, my dude, Mark F. Brownlee, says, he says no to like 99% of brand deals that come his way. I say no to about 90% of like, it's, to be real with you, Viper, I almost never say yes to anyone that's not already on my list unless it's something that I think is going to change the game. Like, again, StreamYard was new to the space, but they were going to change the game. And I saw, and they had a good reputation and they were working with people I already knew that made a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like spread shop already had a good reputation. So I'm like, Oh yeah. And I've used them before I've used them before. I will rarely work with a brand that I myself have not bought from ever. And before I work with them, a lot of times I won't even tell them, but I'll go and I'll buy something and I'll see for myself. <laughs> And so I won't wait for them to send me the product or whatever. I'm like, I'm already bought it. I'm already like, so like me, my dream 100 brands, Elgato, Blackmagic, StreamYard, Logitech, Blue Microphone, Sony, uh, Adobe, uh, Dell, HP, Synology, Western Digital, like Aperture, uh, I, I, I already know Sennheiser for sending me product. The, the, like I already know because I have already bought from them before. Like, so I already know there's like, so you know I, my best answer, is. just like in theory, best answer, work with brands you've already bought from. Definitely. You know what the funny thing is? You have a dream 100. I have a dream seven right now. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I went to go make my list, I can only go with seven brands at the moment. <laughs> Dude, there are so many brands that you probably already own products from that you should just be on your list. You already own products. Probably. Like, dude, you already own Sony headphones. You already own a Rodecaster. You already own a Sony camera. You already have bought Logitech stuff in the past. Blue, 
like you had a blue Yeti for a while. So just like Marquez, there's probably like, dude, there's probably at least 20 brands sitting in front of you <laughs> that you probably should have on that list. You make a good point. <laughs> there are 10 software brands. There's just 10. Okay, here's another one for y'all. And then we got to start wrapping up the show. Think about it. I can literally just go down the list of software brands and I can come up with 20 brands that I could rock with in terms of brand deals because it's software I use. So think about it. I could go software. I'd be like, oh, my, my live stream software. Well, that's StreamYard. My editing software, whatever. Well, that's Adobe. The, the, um, my email list. Oh, well, that's ConvertKit. My web hosting. Oh, I host multiple websites. I go Bluehost, Shopify, Squarespace, uh, you know, Bluehost. The like, because I have different needs for different things or whatever. Uh, the, like, so just like software and services, my accounting software, Bench, my HR portal, Gusto, you know, and stuff like that. Accounting software, the QuickBooks TurboTax. Like, you see what I'm saying? I can just go down to list of software and I come with 20 pieces of software that I used and paid for that I could rock with. Oh, uh, working with remote editors, Oslo. Okay, which is kind of a competitor to frame.io. Oh, clipping my micro content. Oh, here comes veed.io. Here's veed. You know, like, see what I'm saying? Just software. So I can come up with 20 software partners, probably come up with 20 hardware partners. That's 40 right there. I probably extend that list to being 50. I could probably go 25 software, 25 hardware, and come up with 50 brands. Just think about it. So that's software and hardware partners. There's service partners. There's partners on the side of travel and hospitality. Uh, you know? So there's that side of it. Okay. Uh, like, there's even the fact that sometimes platforms do sponsored content, you know? Like, so there's that side. There's also local businesses. You've had, um, I think, like, again, Popcorn World, LeBaron. Yep. So there's local businesses. There's small niche services, too, and everything like that. Indeed. Peter McKinnon ended up working with a local coffee brand up there in Canada and partnered with them. So think about that. Nice. There's, there's also then, um, you could look at accessories and apparel. Peter McKinnon went with like Polar Pro and then they made a Peter McKinnon edition Polar Pro ND filter. He partnered with uh, Nomadics and they made his camera bags and his everyday carry. Indeed. All right. So uh, I myself, I'm going to read this one last question before I get out of here from Annette, our buddy Annette here. Uh, she uh, I'm looking for it. She wants to know uh, what would a, uh, I think it's like Annette's last comment on the thing there. What would a brand deal in real estate look like? Man, I mean, Possibly they're endless <laughs> for real estate. Okay, here, brand deal in real estate. So theoretically, Fundrise is an app that is part of doing REITs, um, Real Estate Investment Trust. So Fundrise is an app. So just like Robinhood, Webull, Public, this one is the real estate equivalent, excuse me, of um, a real estate finance app that you can invest in. So it's kind of like, it's almost more like Acorns, but for real estate. So Acorns is index fund robo investing. Fundrise is basically that for real estate. So there you go, REITs, uh, real estate there. There's other apps. So what would that look like? That would be Redfin. That would be Zillow. Zillow and Redfin could do sponsorship. So there you go. And just because you're doing real estate doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be finance or fintech sponsors so another one that you could do theoretically is nerd wallet another one could be something like a turbo tax because of then the tax advantages of real estate see yeah Bo boom boom so there's always uh, like again don't like viper said think outside of the box think outside of the box for real right then the oh real Power Director University, $10 super chat. I have two channels. One has over 100K. Congrats on that. The other has 3K subs. I want to do brand deals for the smaller channel. Should I mention the 100K channel's growth history when I reach out to brands? Yes, even consider double dipping. Package them. Package them. Sell against both. And then also, maybe grow your Instagram and bundle that. I would love to just build out all my secondary channels and tertiary channels. And then literally, I will literally just do a media 
uh, I'll go to my brands that I have the relationships with and I will just approach them from um, a media buying standpoint of inventory. That's what Linus Tech Tips does with the five channels that Linus Media Group owns. They sell their media inventory much like a television network does. Empire business. Empire business. Mm -hmm. So many possibilities for y'all as creators, regardless of size, background, niche, whatever. You just got to play the game, be patient, and hustle. Boom. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get up out of here, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, let's get out of here. Get out of here. All right, y'all. We want to thank you for tuning in. We hope we answered your questions. Leave us the rest of them in the comments on the replay of this. Be sure when the replay is up, which it will be up on YouTube, to share it out with your fellow creators. Get that going. We appreciate all the super chats. We got all the support. Thank you. Big thank you to our sponsors, uh, TubeBuddy, the best SEO and productivity plugin for YouTube content creators free in the description down below. Also supporting us is StreamYard, the simplest, fastest, bestest solution for live streaming, podcasting, and simulcasting across multiple platforms, letting us be in Facebook, Facebook groups, YouTube, and Twitter, all at the same time right now. So thank you to our homies over at StreamYard, link in the description down below. And also, just for the hell of it, uh, thank you to Spreadshop for sponsoring the brand deals series that I'm doing in terms of recording content. It's also where I make my merchandise like the Create Something Awesome Today hoodie that you can get. I know it's not hoodie season, so we'll also be getting you some nice, comfortable wear for the summer. So you can check that out in the merch shelf down below. So thank you to Spreadshop for that. And thank you to my boys Viper and El Jefe Reviews for joining me here on the stream. Make sure you're supporting them wherever you can. Do not subscribe if you ain't going to watch their content. Don't mess yeah, with don't the do algorithm. Don't, do don't mess with that algorithm. And right now, while we got you here, we've still got over 100 of y'all here at the very end. If you haven't already, just smash that like button on your way out. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful evening or afternoon wherever you are. Just remember... Go out there, create something awesome today, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace.